That's unbelievable. <laughs> the lips. And uh, the boys will be watching the progress here. And Jacko, uh, five months of pre-season. Are you ready? Well, after five stinking months, mate, if we're not ready now, we'll never be. OK, mate, and we've also got Paul Roos here. We'll be having a chat to Roosie a bit later on. But uh, for the moment, Ed, back to you. Thanks very much, Jim. On Sunday, Melbourne versus Geelong. And, of course, the footy show will be on Sunday morning and we'll be uh, previewing this game in more detail. But let's have a look at the ins and outs and the new players from this game. Melbourne have brought in one new player. That's Paul Primkel, he, Primke, rather, he's from Woodville, West Torrens, uh, 193 centimetre defender. Geelong, uh, we'll go to the, sorry, the Melbourne side first, and as you can see there, pretty much the same as last, last year with Jakovic at full forward, and we'll be talking to Jacko a little bit later in the show about how the Melbourne team will line up. And uh, for the Geelong side, the new players, Shane Brewer from Woodville, West Torrens, another player from that premiership side over there in Adelaide, Kane Little from the Western Jets, and Daniel Fletcher, who actually is the son of the Geelong team manager down there, Gary Fletcher, so good luck to the boys in that game down there. Let's have a look at the side and there's only one man we all look for down at Geelong and there he is at full forward, Gary Ablett. Will he have another great year as he did last year? A few notable omissions, although Hinkley has been picked in the halfback flank. He was a player who looked like he would be missing from this game but of course uh, uh, the uh, Barry Stoneham out of the side and Robert Scott was the player that they, he was under a bit of a, a cloud. He's also not named in that team. So the Cats do have a few problems going into the game against Melbourne. The D's did win the early game last year. Alright, let's take a break and after the break, more teams and an injury for the Saints is one of their key players and uh, I think he's probably a little bit embarrassed after that question is Stuart Lowe. He is over with Trevor Marmalade and Alan Jakovic for Football Triathlon. Uh, yes indeed Ed, uh, we've got the boys here, Stewie Lowe and Alan Jakovic, uh, now the, uh, the footy show triathlon, uh, this is what it is, we have, uh, each player will have, uh, uh, they'll be doing it one at a time, what they have to do is they have to have five <laughs> shots at the rebel hoop with the basketball, uh, five putts on the uh, golfing green here and then five shots with the handball at the world of sport target, well the, uh, the Sunday footy show target should we say, and uh, handball, Jacko, that's just... Uh, <laughs> Trevor, Trevor that's... I hope you enjoy your uh, one and only appearance yeah, on the show. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. And uh, Jacko, just uh, for your information, the handball, that's World just off the good. flat of the hand with the fist. OK, mate? All right, got that? And now uh, Stewie, uh, Stewie here won the toss and elected Jacko to go first. Jacko has a minute to complete the five shots at each one. Jacko, get in position and your time starts now. Jacko coming up there, throwing a couple of bricks. OK, one for two for Jacko. Two for three. Kicking on. Oh. Two for four. And three for five. We check the time here. It's still 30 seconds, 37 seconds remaining. Three for five on the basketball hoops. Oh. Yes. For four. Here we go. Look at the time remaining. 22 seconds remaining for five points. With the left hand, Jacko. Yeah. Hits Louie, fair and square. Six. <laughs> Two more to go for seven. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. For a score of eight out of 15. And uh, not bad form there, Jacko. Not bad, I've been practicing all day. <laughs> and uh, you actually did erect the hoop behind us, didn't you? This whole set. And the whole set, uh, Jacko here works in staging. Of course, uh, Channel 9 spotted his prowess on the football field. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, Stewie Lowe going to be coming back later on the show to try and beat a score of eight. OK, big hand for Alan Jakovic. <laughs> Jacko, congratulations. And uh, we have the, uh, the footy show shirts for both of you. One for you, Stu. One for you, Alan. Alan Jakovic goes into the second round. Well done, Jacko. You knew you could do it. Yeah, all the time. OK, mate, thanks very much. Djakovic into the second round. Back to you, Ed. That's it for the footy show triathlon. OK, it's Stuart, while you're there. Stuart.
This has been another... Demon's Day in the Aussie Rules, round one, with few surprises but heaps of action. And a shark attack... Spots in the top five. Australian football and Melbourne has caused the biggest upset of round one, thrashing Geelong by 65 points at the MCG. Also today, Brisbane overcame a tenacious... G was tipped as the battle of the full forwards, Ablett and Djakovic. But it was the Demon Spearhead who stole the limelight. Melbourne led by 18 points at quarter time. Geelong's three goals all kicked by Paul Couch. Midway through term two and the Demons were 35 points clear. Djakovic and Swars cutting a sway through a ragged Cats defence. Two snap goals by Forsman and a fine running effort by Hocking got Geelong back in the contest. But again the Dees responded. Five goals in front at half time. Djakovic having kicked six on three different opponents. For a fleeting moment, Geelong appeared a chance to get back in the contest. Hocking snapping cruelly. But Schwartz's fourth goal and Lovell's third again took the margin out to 34 points with a quarter to play. Melbourne extended their lead to 65 points in the end. Djakovic finishing with eight. Lyon, Tingay and Lovell among their best. Geelong beginning 1994 in disappointing fashion. It's fun, look, uh, it's been six months of hard work and uh, it's, it's good to come up in front of your home team and, uh, and play and respond as well as we did. Yeah, I think it's um, you know, imperative that we get away to a good start, you know, particularly after last year's slow start. And we're sort of always chasing our tail towards the end of the year and uh, so we recognise that and today was pretty important and there was a good solid win. Yeah, it was all, we're always a bit toey coming into the first game against a good side like Geelong and we, we played exceptionally good footy so uh, we've just got to keep that up. Defender Sean White was delighted about keeping Ablett quiet. You've really got to be very positive every time the ball's coming down and you know you think that I can beat them and that's the attitude that I take into the game that I can beat them you know luckily for me it worked out that way today. Oh certainly they played better than us uh, we just couldn't get any cohesion going to get together and uh, obviously um, you know we sort of we played in you know in real bad patches you know. The final scores Melbourne 26-18 174 defeating Geelong 16-13 109. Big scoring today for Melbourne over Geelong at the MCG. About 40,000 people there, amongst them Kevin Bartlett. And Kevin, the scoring power for Melbourne was very impressive. Yes, Bruce, uh, absolute record score kicked by the Demons against Geelong today. 26-18, 174 points, a 65-point win. And their forward line functioned beautifully with Djakovic booting eight goals eight. He should have kicked about 12 goals. Gary Lyon was absolutely superb. The, the leader of the, of the club kicked five goals across the half forward line. And Swartz, a player who was missing last year, burst back into calculations and playing across centre half forward in a two pronged attack with Gary Lyon, also booted four goals. Lovell around the ground booted four also. And young Jeff Hilton, a young boy, came across from St Kilda, booted three goals in the last quarter, and he looks like he's a good find as well. We've got some terrific highlights coming up from the game. We see here Djakovic, this is a collector's item, a long handball in the second quarter, goes across here to Lovell, and Lovell from just on the 50 metre line pops this one straight through the centre. Been a terrific play. We see a great smother here by Swartz, which ricochets back towards Djakovic, who picks this one up. He booted four goals in the second quarter in an absolute superb display. He was too good for O'Reilly. Then he had Darcy also onto him. We see here Gary Hocking, the best player for Geelong, along with John Barnes. Ricochets into the man there, but picks up well. And magnificent kick on his left boot there, his non-preferred boot, and he just drilled it. He was a great player, Gary Hocking. He kept Geelong in the game. We see Neitz now coming down from uh, centre-half back. Another fine player towards Djakovic. Now have a look here, Bruce, because he kicks a great goal. He now gives the crowd a high five. Now, I played 403 games. I never thought of doing that. Well, I was kissed... always, always worried I'd get my arm ripped off. <laughs> KB kissed his brother last year. He did too. We see Djakovic once more there in front of the pack. Beautiful pick up by Schwartz as he puts that one through. He's important to them, Schwartz, isn't he? Because he basically had an off-season last year. Yes, played uh, very few games and he hasn't got the headband this year. This is Ablett's first goal for the match. This came late in the game. A magnificent snap. The crowd went wild. They were, they were waiting all day for Djakovic to do well. And we see here Viney kicking the ball up. Coming through there is Djakovic. Just tapped it down to Hilton, who kicked this goal. He kicked three goals in the last quarter in what was an absolute onslaught by the Demons. So they ran out... And Winners by 65 points. We can see here the quarter by quarter scores. They led by 18 points at quarter time, 24 points at half time, 
34 points at three quarter time and finally won by 65 points. 26 Kevin, 18, that's a record score for the Demons against the Cats. Kevin Jarrett Healy said on Sports World this morning that Sean White would play on he Gary Ablett despite the fact that White hadn't played in any of the preseason. He obviously had a very big match. Well, he did. He was fantastic. He didn't have many stats, but I, I thought he was absolutely fantastic when you consider that he was playing on Gary Ablett who at the MCG has got such a fantastic record and he's arguably the greatest player playing league football today and for Sean White to play on him today and to do so well he kicked two goals, he kicked one goal his last goal of the match also in the last quarter virtually on the siren to give him two for the game but Sean White was absolutely superb and also we should mention that Rodney Grinter was reported by two umpires. He hasn't got a very good record at the tribunal. Umpire Sheehan and McKenzie reported him for allegedly charging John Barnes of Geelong. So let's see what takes place with Rodney Grinter. I personally didn't think there was much in the incident. Give us your votes, KB. Well, I gave three votes to Sean White. I thought he was absolutely superb at fullback today. Two votes to Gary Lyon, and I gave one vote to Alan Jakovic. And, and after the game, let me tell you that Stephen Phillips went down into the Melbourne rooms and he caught up with the best player on the ground, Sean White. Sean, uh, seven goals a match he averaged last year. You knew you had a big job on your hands. Well, a lot of people were sort of saying if I can keep him down to five or six, I'll be doing a good job. But you know, I put a high expectations on my own ability and I was hoping to sort of keep him down to about one or two. And Peter Rode hadn't given him that free kick. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Um, you know, I mean, I was happy. I mean, it was a team effort. It made it easier for me because the ball wasn't really sort of coming down very far. So. Do you sleep well before a match like this or do you play the game through in your mind? Yesterday during the day was a bit difficult. I was pretty uptight. Um, you know, I was pretty fidgety the whole time, but I slept like a baby last night. I was quite happy. I don't think he'll sleep too well tonight because that goal right on the bell must have just upset a near perfect day for you. Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. I mean, he'll probably come out and kick 10 goals next week. You know, I mean, it, it's just the way the game goes. I mean, everybody's really happy about it. As you can see, all the boys are pretty happy to, you know, get off to a win, you know, in the first game this year, considering it took us four last. Year. Well done. Thanks very much. Sean White getting the sports well votes from Kevin Bartlett. Thanks for that, Kevin. And Sean White had a hamstring operation less than four weeks ago and has bounced back. At Brisbane today, gee, terrific. Hey. Meantime, Melbourne's Rodney Grinter is tonight facing the tribunal after being booked for charging Geelong's John Barnes during the third quarter of yesterday's match at the MCG. Grinter is no stranger to the tribunal, but the Demons are confident he'll be cleared and will present amateur video of the incident if required. A very important night for Rod Grinter. It's his 11th appearance at the tribunal. He's been suspended in the past for a total of 31 matches. So Stephen from Glenferry Oval, that's all for the moment. The finest moments of his illustrious career. He's thrown out. It didn't take long for the AFL tribunal to look at this incident and decide that Grinter had no case to answer. It's one of the few times that the defender has emerged unscathed from the tribunal. He averages over four weeks suspension for each guilty verdict. The AFL video watchers are looking at this incident between Sydney's Michael Werner and Brisbane's Gilbert McAdam. McAdam was released from hospital today after surgery to repair a jaw broken in two places. Metal plates were inserted. He'll miss up to eight weeks. While Hawthorne full forward Jason Dunster was having more... Problems. Melbourne veteran Rod oh, Grinter was Rodney. cleared of charging Geelong's John Barnes by the AFL Tribunal. When the report was laid, I was uh, quite surprised and after viewing it uh, on the video, it certainly uh, wasn't warranted at all. David Loudon, 7 Nightly News. Victoria will be able to gauge its improvement on Saturday when it takes on Hawthorne at Waverley. The Demons will again be looking for a big contribution from rejuvenated defender Sean White. The life of a fullback these days is not an easy one, especially when you've had countless leg operations and little pre-season. But veteran defender Sean White actually volunteered for the job on Gary Ablett, and what a job he did. Last year was when I injured myself and didn't play a game was the Geelong game. And I sat in the stand and watched him kick 11 goals, and I'm going, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. And he'll do it this way. And, you know, I suppose, it, it, it sort of, from my point of view, it was a little bit of faith in my own ability because I played him the way I thought had, he had to be played, and it, and it worked for me. The buoyant demons will be tested more fully this week against Hawthorne. White's likely task will be Jason Dunstall. What I want to do is basically just be as close to him as, for as long as possible and especially when the ball's coming into our area because if I'm there, well then it's one-on-one -on -one and most of the boys in the team would put, uh, put themselves up for a one-on-one -on -one challenge against anybody. At the other end of the ground, Alan Jakovic led a potent forward line, booting eight goals eight. 
He knows he has to improve his accuracy. Well, I think tonight I'll, I'll be having quite a few extra kicks. I think I might stay back a little bit tonight. Very disappointed. Saturday will also be game number 150 for skipper Gary Lyon, who knows not to get too carried away with one win. Pretty excited about everything, but I mean, you've got to keep a lid on it and uh, back to work today. And it uh, comes around pretty quick when you're playing a Sunday to a Saturday game. And, uh, you know, be honest, before we know it, so uh, we've got to settle down pretty quickly, I'm sure we will. Geelong superstar Gary Ablett to just one goal. It was a remarkable performance for White, who thought his injury-riddled career was over. Here's Lou Richards. Sean White could well be regarded as the best recruit of round one. While the other Irishman in the Melbourne team, Jim Steins, racked up his 150th consecutive game, White emerged from obscurity to shut out Gary Ablett, the man who booted 11 in the corresponding match last season. I really was looking forward to playing against him and that had been my target for pretty much the whole of the summer. I really wanted to play on him, so I used him as my target. A chronic hamstring injury needed surgery, had a further 12 operations, and it's lucky he can walk, let alone beat the great Ablett. Certainly contemplated retirement um, because, you know, 10 years down the track and so many injuries. I mean, if I just give my, my doctor a call, he first thing he does is he puts in a quick call to his Mercedes dealer and orders a new one because he thinks he's going to get another operation out of me. White, a two-time Victorian player, was the first real star of the Irish experiment. He hopes this year he can once again match the performances of the celebrated countryman Steins. Lou Richards, National 9 News. Australia has no chance. game coming up. Let's have a look at the Hawks lineup. Uh, Jason Dunstall is out of that side. That, of course, is a savage blow for the Hawks there. He has a thigh injury and could miss up to three weeks. Cooper also out. And a new player, Paul Barnard from East Perth, as well as Nugent coming into the side. This is the Hawthorne lineup, the 21 that has been picked. As you can see, the two new players there on the interchange bench uh, at the moment. And uh, Sam, without uh, the great man at full forward, it's well, going to be hard for him. Just a certain air of... Um Ordinariness, is that a word, Eddie? Well, we'll a sort we know what you're trying to make out anyway, sir. A certain air of humility's come over that side with the uh, tip-top man being out, and of course, uh, uh, you'd still say that they're a pretty fair combination, but uh, don't worry about uh, having some tough opposition who they play against because uh, the side that they play against is up and running. And John Platten, of course, has had a hamstring injury during this week. Uh, didn't do much training. Declared himself fit today. He is in the side, but obviously there's a bit of a question mark above him as well. Now, being a, a ruck coach, Sam, a former great ruckman, Crochet up against uh, Jimmy Steins. He's going to have his uh, job ahead of him, the young fellow there. Well, the classic uh, contest between youth and exuberance and uh, a little bit of experience with Jim, the reigning, well, the next Brownlow medalist. But uh, don't worry about Simon Crochet. He's a very fair uh, and capable operator. But, of course, so is Steins, more of a follower than a ruckman. But uh, Crochet perhaps just uh, feeling his way, but that should be an interesting contest as well. Shouldn't it, Ned? I think so, Timmy. I think Melbourne are going to be... Uh, <laughs> Tim, he's talking sorry. to Tim. He's not talking Tim, to you anymore. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd stuff you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. No, Sam. Sam. Ned. Ned Sam. <laughs> oh, no, I really think Melbourne are going to be terrific. I, I think they've got some terrific bloke up forward with Jack Mitch kicks Melbourne. eight goals. Don't worry about Melbourne at the moment. I know, I know but I, just, Hawthorne... I don't think Hawthorne can go with Melbourne. I think Melbourne have got terrific hand speed and what I an think they'll be... What an You've written Hawthorne off after they've no, I haven't flogged written them off. Geelong. I haven't written them off at all. I just so they can't go with Melbourne, you reckon? Not this game, That'd be St Kilda, Sam. All right. <laughs> That'd be some killer. Well, Sam, it was, uh, was on telly last week. You might have seen it. All right, we'll get straight into this lineup. The Melbourne team I that actually I'm did flog Geelong. They defeated them by 66 <laughs> points at the MCG, Sam. And this is the Melbourne lineup. Forget the ins and outs because the Demons believe the side that they had on the field for round one is good enough to beat Hawthorne. No change in the Melbourne lineup. And Jakovic, as we mentioned in the opening there, eight goals, eight. A great performance there from Jacko, one of the panel members on the footy show. He's on fire. High yes. fives with all the crowd. And so. Uh, well did he go, he's resting tonight. Um, unchanged, why would you change a side that flogged Geelong? And that's who I was talking about. I was I'm talking very sorry, about, Sam, uh, but, but just on the Jakovic thing, uh, 21 kicks, uh, 12 marks, one handball. What do you suppose went wrong with the handball? Well, he's <laughs> desperately annoyed about that handball. He's uh, solemnly promised to the Melbourne Coterie that if he's forward of the centre line, he'll have a shot. <laughs> and uh, they can't understand why he hand passed at all. I mean, it's just foreign to his makeup. Must but, have been uh, an eight, eight, he could have kicked 16 goals because eight and eight, in fact, is 16. <laughs> I think you've got to take your hat off to Melbourne. I mean, they're continually written off as a side over the last four or five years, and, and they just keep popping up. And it was certainly a tremendous effort last week against Geelong. Um, Sean White on Gary Ablett completely cut him out. 
Um, and he well, won't have the ultimate test, Tim, this uh, week, Sean White, because Jason Dunstall, Trevor, that's correct, he's not playing, no, is he? Uh, no, I think, uh, as we just saw on the side there, no, he's not, well, that's Sam. A, that's a Thanks big for hole. asking. That's a big hole in there. So, but I actually think that Melbourne will uh, finish in the top four. I'm going to... Yeah, get myself right out there on the limb, and I think they're one of the best sides in the competition, Melbourne. All right, we'll leave it there, and let's go oh, you don't to... Want, you don't want to talk about it anymore? No, anymore. we'll leave it at that, Tim. A big statement. It's a very big off. statement, and we've got that on uh, on record as well, so we might bring that one back later after in the year. one game. After one game, Tim has uh, tipped that Melbourne being, will be in the top four. Let's go... Up Geelong, and today Melbourne won their first game over Hawthorne at Waverley Park, demolishing the Hawks, who have more injury concerns. The Demons jumped their opponents, kicking nine goals to one in the opening quarter to set up a 54-point victory. Jakovic and Doyle both finished with four, while Hawk skipper Chris Langford was injured with a hamstring. Dream Orford has the highlights. There was no Dunstall on Hawthorne's forward line, so Paul Hudson took it upon himself to grab some initiative. He kicked all the Hawks' goals to half-time. Goes for goal and kicks it brilliantly. Captain Chris Langford went for a spectacular run out of defence, but in the process tore a hamstring and was on the bench after 13 minutes. If that wasn't bad enough, they faced an avalanche from the Demons. Greg Doyle rucked and kicked three in the first quarter. Gary Lyon set up chances for Jakovic and the full forward was at his best. Oh, don't tell me he's kicked this. He has. He's happy. It's a goal. When things run hot, everything works. Hilton's kick bouncing through and the Demons led by eight goals at quarter time. Coach's expressions told the story of a one-sided half an hour. It was two goals each in the second quarter, despite Hudson, the Hawks a mile behind, and Dunstall could only watch the massacre. There was no coming back for the Hawks, despite the best efforts of some of their stars. He chips it in the wards goal, and he's put it through it. Even some unaccountable misses by Jakovic couldn't stop the Ds running away. He finished with four goals nine. In the last quarter, Jim Stein sealed a nine-goal win with his third for the day, and Melbourne's first win over the Hawks at Waverley. It's important we won, we've got a bye next week, and, uh, and uh, it's nice to go into that, having a rest with two wins under our belt. Drew Morfitt, Seven Nightly News. When we return... Do no wrong. The Demons dominated the opening term, Doyle booting three. Doyle swings round on the left foot. He's kicked another one to the Demons. The Hawks suffered an early blow. Captain Chris Langford sidelined with a hamstring injury. But Melbourne had the numbers, kicking nine goals to one by the first break. Hudson did his best to boot the Hawks out of trouble, kicking two early in the second. Hudson's kicked another one for the Hawks, they're coming back. But the Demons had all the answers, up by 49 points at the half. There seemed little the undermanned Hawks could do as the Demons continued to control the match. Oh, Jakovic, that's his third. Jakovic dominating up forward. Well, there you go. Missing at the other end, Hawthorne spearhead Jason Dunstall, indicating the nature of the match. Melbourne running out 54-point winners, beating Hawthorne at Waverley Park for the first time. So Melbourne notched their second win for the season with a 54-point victory over Hawthorne. Meanwhile, here at the MCG, North Melbourne began... Their... You're the boss, and you're Ross Oakley, and I'm not. OK, let's pick up some of the highlights. In a pretty big game at Waverley Park, and it was all Melbourne. Young Doyle, a left footer, and setting the demons alight early. Hawthorne were really stunned. Hilton, the hotel, lets a dribbler go and it keeps on bouncing. And Scott McGuinness, good night. A big first term and some of the clashes. Clatton with Phoebe. Jakovic kicks some and missed some. But true to his own, in front of his adoring crowd. Bang. He loved it and so did the crowd. At the end, just wiped the floor with them yesterday, Peter. Well, two things came out of the, this game yesterday, Rex, and that one was that Melbourne are a very, very good side, a greatly improved side, and have gone on from last year. And two, that full forward and a top-class forward is the most important player on the ground because Hawthorne without Dunster were like a ship without a rudder. And uh, But that first quarter where Melbourne kicked nine goals to one was the like Hawthorne style of the... Uh, 
of the 80s. It was absolutely magnificent. They were hard at the ball. They were tough. They started with uh, Greg Doyle in the ruck and Steins down forward. Uh, Gary Lyon absolutely dominated across half forward in that first term. Jakovic was having a good clash there with Langford. Langford tore his hamstring and went off the ground. And I think when Langford went off, that was the end of the Hawks. Melbourne went on with it. And uh, they've, they're such an even side. They've got all these guys about six foot, six foot well, one. They're the same size, aren't they? Yeah. Some... Brett Lovett, the Phoebes, Andy Lovell, these guys. They they're all very... followers. That's exactly right. Uh, t- now, here's uh, Matthew Phoebe. Now, Stephen and Matthew, they don't get many raps. But uh, look at that disposal to Steins there. Absolutely magnificent play. And uh, if you play Melbourne this year, you're not going to get an easy game. Now, you were buried for Hawthorne for the last few years, Macca. I oh, buried for Collingwood, Bernie. Let's get that straight. I thought it was Carl. I admire Hawthorne. Oh, right. Well, you've backed so you Hawthorne up. For the At last five years or so, are they gone without Dunstall? And well, are they in strife well, this year? We know that you'd love to think they're gone because you hate All of them. Would, well, I do you? not hate there them. There is no way, no, I'm going to ride off Hawthorne but at this the stage. Next they next definitely need. Games. You've got 150 goal full forward out. You've got the best full back in the competition out. You're definitely going to miss them. The next four but games will be North Melbourne, Carlton, West Coast, and Essendon. Perhaps their season will be determined in the next month. I agree with you, Jared, wholeheartedly. Tough games to come up, but Hawthorne have had a habit over the years of bouncing back when everyone's written them off, and I'm not prepared to write them off. They're still a very good side. Yesterday, okay. there was a chance for uh, Jarman, Pritchard, uh, Ben Allen to put their hand up, and they didn't. And, uh, you know, I think nice the Haw- a few palms out there. I think their midfield's got a, a huge problems. They need Johnny Platten. Uh, I was talking to Kevin Bartlett before the um, show. We were talking about Johnny... Getting towards the end of his career and he's starting to stage for free kicks a little bit. Um, With three umpires, you're not going to get away with that. Darren Jarman's just got to work a little bit harder when he hasn't got the ball. He's got the talent. Should be the best player in the competition, Darren Jarman, with his ability. Your votes for the Channel 7 Footy Panel Player of the Year Award. Well, the votes were very difficult. All Melbourne players I went for, but I eventually decided on Stephen Tingay, who's a real goer on the wing, and... uh, Brett Lovett, new lease of life, very highly skilled player, Brett. And this man is a class player, and forwards are so important to a football side. So Gary Lyon was magnificent yesterday. OK, uh, well done to Melbourne and young Greg Doyle, the left footer, now in the side, comes into the studio. Welcome to the show, uh, Greg. Thanks. A fellow left footy, you had four goals yesterday. Are you enjoying playing with an exciting team at the moment, although only two games in? Well, it's only early, but... Uh... Certainly off to a better start than what we did last year. You know, last year we lost four games in a row and we sort of set ourselves to you know, start the season well, win the first two games and go into the bye and sort of just reassess things from there. Tell us a little bit about Neil Baum. When I was at Richmond with Kevin Barth, that he stole my car, he ran over <laughs> Kevin's dog, he used to take a niner into the botanical gardens for Sunday morning training and now the man has turned a side that was struggling last year into the world beaters early. I think um, last year we... We struggled to come to grips with uh, Barmy's change of tactics pretty much with how we played previously with John Northey. But this year we've sat down and we've sort of worked out how we want to play and everyone's adjusted and everyone knows what their role is and he's got everyone... OK, sort Bob. Of... The beginning of the game when you're in the ruck and Jim's up in the pocket, is that a... Well, it's obviously a pre-arranged plan, but who devised that? Well, it's just uh, something... The week before, we just thought it might throw Geelong out a little bit, probably expecting Steins to start in the ruck. And we just thought we'd, uh, we'd start that way and uh, we it continue well. this way. So, I mean, there's no set plan that I'm going to start there or Jimmy's going to start. It's sort of just whatever we think is the best for the situation. Now, it's interesting that you started your career with St Kilda back in 1990, played uh, two league games, two last <coughs> year, so only four games in, what, nearly four years. What happened in between? Uh, when I left St Kilda I just sort of uh, lost the motivation a little bit. I'd been there for a while and you sort of really have to make the commitment as the game's so professional now and I sort of wasn't ready for it so I, I just thought I'd take my chances, go back, played in the VFA where I really enjoyed my footy and when I came back I sort of uh, really decided that you know, I was going to have a real good crack at it. Greg, have uh, Melbourne finally accepted what we've known for a long time that most ruckmen have very little influence in the middle of the ground tap out? So you're only 190 centimetres. Six foot four. Now, I've watched you against Madden and taller Ruckman. It appears your job really is just to neutralise the other Ruckman, let the ball hit the ground where your strong on ball players can take it away. Would that be fair comment? I think so. I mean, we, I mean, you have to assess it. If you are getting on top of your opponent, obviously you will try and get the ball to your on ballers if you can get your hand on it. But How often it, do you think that happens during a game? Oh, 
<clears throat> probably a couple of times a quarter, maybe, centre bounces. But uh, obviously, if your opponent is uh, giving you some problems, the best option is to bring the ball just in close to the ground and, and uh, take it from Start there. Start again from there. That's now, right. you rest down there on the forward line, if you call it a rest at times. Now, playing alongside Alan Djakovic, uh, does he... Order you around? Does he tell you to get out and give him space, or no? I mean, we're both starting back, right in the goal square, and obviously um, he's at his best when he's leading for the ball and whatever. So obviously that's his option. But there's no set plan that we don't lead. I mean, the bit more options there is, the easier it is for him as well. And uh, no, I think it's just taking a little time for him to adjust to having someone down there as well. But it's uh, started to work out. You know, we've been doing it for a few weeks. Is he, the taught you the, is he taught you the high fives <laughs> over the fence yet? Uh, no, 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 I, I think I'll just leave that to him for the you moment. You go for a nice position with the handball all the time. You get look out, look ready for the handball, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, I mean, his job's to kick goals, so, I mean, obviously, he's pretty keen to kick them, but he, he, uh, he looked for a couple of guys yesterday with the handballs, and hopefully if he can kick straight... Look at them, yeah. <laughs> now, Greg, uh, Melbourne are one of the uh, clubs to lead the way in training in daylight hours. I think 3 o'clock is the starting time on a Tuesday, right. and you play the game in the daylight. Is everyone fitting in, or even those with jobs? Yeah, well, we... I mean, we spoke about it a long time beforehand and, and made sure it was right with everyone because it was no point doing it if yeah. you know, one or two blokes couldn't make it. It had to be a, a thing throughout the whole group, so everyone sort of made the effort to organise it and so far it's going very well. Terrific, mate. Well, there's a couple of Easter eggs. As the budget's just about running out, I don't think I'll get any uh, for myself and my dog, Missy. Thanks very much, Rex. But, Greg, lovely to see you and all the best for Melbourne for the Thank rest you. of the year. Greg Doyle, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's check the votes for last Sunday's rounds. OK, Melbourne and Geelong, Sean White. His job on Gary Ablett was magnificent. Gary Lyon, five goals from the half-forward line, and Jacko. Wasn't he magnificent last week? And again yesterday, could have been well and truly out in front. Brisbane Mighty and... Demons at Waverley, where they Dees. outclassed one of their bitter modern-day rivals, Hawthorne. These are in town. Melbourne's first quarter was their best ever. 9-1 against the Hawks. The eventual winning margin, 54 points. Rodney Grinder, thanks for coming in. To me, the Demons look bigger, stronger. Their goal-to-goal -goal line from full back down to uh, full forward. They found another ruck when it seemed to me that the goals come from everywhere in that first quarter. Yeah, I think it's uh, very important to get off to a good start uh, in a game like that. And, uh, you know, our on-ballers certainly uh, were terrific uh, in at the ball. And uh, Greg Doyle did a terrific job in the ruck. Yeah. Sam, they look very strong. You were there. Uh, no, I wasn't actually there, Max, but... Uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't there. No, I was out at the uh, North Melbourne well, games. This is where but... your ruck coach is at Melbourne now, is it? Uh, this is correct, yeah. yeah. But uh, Sorry about that, No, Sam. it's OK. No. no, I've heard enough of the game and uh, followed it on the television last night to uh, know that it was a terrific performance by... Um, it's on uh, SBS. What? By, <laughs> by Melbourne, uh, Sam. By it's Melbourne. It was on SBS, wasn't it? Melbourne, Sam. I followed well, the game. Sam. I know it, they played very well, and I want to ask you this, Rodney, in light yeah, of the give fact... Us a match, give us a match summary. First. Just while we're young, Sam. Well, sometime this century will be all right. <laughs> Sam, you prob now? Sam, you've probably forgotten the question there, mate. No, yeah, don't I'm get frustrated, boy. Go straight forward. It was an excellent uh, performance You're by some of the that. younger, more mobile big men in the game. Name They've them. Certainly... Pardon? Name them. Well, I will name them. Primke, Neitz, Schwartz, Lyons not so young, Djakovic is back because he hasn't played much football, and Jim Steins, and this is what I want to ask Rodney Grinter, uh, Jim Steins, a long now, time to ask first of all, Alan Djakovic, he seems to be king with his left and right foot, is he, uh, Ted said he was a lair just earlier on, off camera, was a lair. off camera, uh, is he become I a think, bit flamboyant in his game? I think in one of the, um, one of the plays yesterday, he was a little bit uh, leerish that um, oh. he was running into an open goal and elected to left kick foot. on his left rather than mm. his right and missed the goal, so... If you can get those sort of things out of his game, I think uh, it will be terrific. Paul Hudson, uh, did he fill in admirably for Jason Dunsell? I don't suppose anyone does that, but he kicked three goals in that first quarter, didn't he? Yeah, well, he did uh, in the first half. He kicked three goals, and um, you know the ball just wasn't being delivered um, down into Hawthorne's forward line as it was uh, you know, normally with Hawthorne. Um, and I even think if Dunsell had been playing, I think the result would have been very we similar. We watched you play last week against uh, Geelong. And uh, it was a great game of football by Melbourne. Little Tingay mm -hmm. played excellent. This yes. little boy, Hilton, who yes. came from St Kilda. Could I yeah. just make a comment? Oh, Sorry, Rod. Oh, it's, no, it's Ted. <laughs> yeah. Just while with the visions on there, there's Jim Steins. Now, Neil Barmer's switched the personnel around. He's got Jim Steins, a Brownlow medalist in the ruck, now playing on the forward line. Yeah, I think that um, is probably to offset the opposition. Um, the opposition probably go into uh, uh, a Melbourne game thinking that Jim Steins is going to be in the ruck. And 
with the advantage of having well, a great deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I know now. Sam, is there one of the answers to my question? Sort of sorry, off. Ted, I was trying to make well, the vision well, perfect. Hilton and Tingay. Yes, Tingay. Very, very, very quick, very quick. Tingay was formerly with St Killer, was he not? No, no, no Hilton. Hilton, I should say. Yeah. 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 How come he got away from Cousin me? Cousin Hyatt. Oh, don't be stupid. <laughs> I, uh, they are, but they are very quick, aren't they, uh, Rod? Yes, um, yeah. Stephen Tingay and Jeff Hilton have both put in a terrific pre-season and... Uh, um, Jeff's just roaming across the forward line there, kicking a couple of goals Swartz. each week. And Swartz, yes, jumping in now and again. So You've got a new list of life too. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm back onto the back line again um, and enjoying that role. You right. got a, you've right. got a let off last week too, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, I did. Right. Right. I was going to be a character reference right. for you. <laughs> right. Can I ask you a question, Rod? You'd be pleased we've got uh, trial by video now, wouldn't you too, mate? Yes, it certainly helps me on um, certain occasions. Clear your name. That's right. Rod, yeah. how long did you take, reckon, last year took for the, the players to really understand the new coach? Because it, it did look like that the team wasn't going really well early. And yeah. now, this year, after that first year, you look like you've got your act together. Yeah, I think uh, it certainly takes a while to um, get to know how the coach wants you to play. And the players are certainly... Um, playing to a plan, and uh, that shows on the scoreboard. Did you hear that? Yes, I heard yeah, it. Yeah, good. Of course I did. And, and they won both games too, take by note. a margin. Take seeing note. as there was another side playing out there against you yesterday in Hawthorne, did you notice there... What, what difference did you notice about Hawthorne the last time you played them? The last time we played them? Well, uh, their delivery out of the... Uh, across the centre line was a lot better in previous yeah, games in previous, than what it was yep. uh, yesterday. Yeah, Rod, notwithstanding that, as good as Dunst to lose, out of the centre, I believe, is where Hawthorne win their games. They've yes. been so good. Did you go in with a set plan to nullify them, to beat them in a various way? I noticed you've tagged two of their players. Yeah, well, I don't think we went into the game as tagging um, Allen and Platten and Jarman. I think we just had um, players playing on them, and those players were beat them to the fall of the ball, and uh, you know we got the advantage. How many years have you been at Melbourne? Um, Twelve years. How many coaches? Um, Barassi, Northy and Baum. It's just mastermind. No, it's not mastermind at all. I just want to ask him the, 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 to try a small comparison of, of the three compared with Barmy. Yeah, well, I think Barmy's a very much down-to-earth type of fellow. He's very easy to talk to and is very honest. Um, and I think the players respect that. That's and, right. And, uh, Didn't yeah. you get it from the other two? <laughs> oh, I'm not saying I did it, but <laughs> I think he's, you know, oh, he's put him Short on the white. spot. Ted, that's a terrible thing to say to the bloke. It's a pity you didn't get a new coach at the state side. Oh, you got one, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you've knifed Billy. <laughs> All those things he's done yeah. for you finally shafted him, Ted. Is there anyone you haven't shafted in life? Yeah. Did you cut him? No. <laughs> the cat's no, got the, your tongue, Put the Ted. tape back on, Ted. No. This time last ridiculous. year. Just a ridiculous Exactly a ridiculous this time question. last year, Rod, we asked Lee Matthews where he's going to put the Premiership Cup. Could we ask you? You <laughs> must have a position now sorted out for at this early stage even. Oh, no, I don't think we're going to get carried away with that, Sammy. I Are think uh, No, not I at this say, early stage. Yet. It's only two games and we've played very well in those two games yeah, and there's a long way to go. Rod, you're talking about the um, Hawthorne not delivering the ball to the forward line. Well, that came about from the pressure... Applied yeah, by your guys? Yeah, absolutely. From the centre area there, the, the Lovitz, the um, uh, Vineys and the Obs putting pressure on mm. their on ballers, mm. they weren't able to deliver it freely into the forward line. You're a player, isn't it, Andrew Obst, don't you think, Sam? Yes, I do indeed. Mm. And I think a lot that better Todd Viney is a lot for. better than people give him credit for as well. Is he Todd similar Viney. to you, Todd Viney? I think a lot of those Melbourne players have uh, been underrated and they've really improved. They've got a very the good old, combination, talls and smalls. The old Ds are back in town, Rodney. Back in oh, town. Right. It's a grand old flag. Uh, uh, me. Rodney, yeah. at the moment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, this is the footy show. And after the break, those great rivals... That would be a fantastic trip. Our two players today, Peter German from North Melbourne and Rod Grinner from Melbourne. Now, five shots with each hand, starting with the left hand first. Now, we must say this and give a big round of applause to Peter, ja uh, Peter uh, German. Peter German because he's firing with a broken left hand. So let's put it together for him. The now, wait a minute. You're conducting an ball with a broken brain, so I don't want to take good at that. Sam, Move here the we target. go. Now. Away you go, Pete, with the Move left hand. Target. 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 Five. 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 And five, five more five. makes him ten. Five. That's fifteen. Three fives in a row. Five. Makes him twenty. And five. And five is twenty-five. Now, five. well done, well done, Peter. Now it's Rod Gritter to fire. Twenty-five. Ted, don't repeat to me. Move the target. Oh, Move the oh target. look, you'll have to stop. Five, five to Rod Gritter, first shot. Five. Another five makes him ten. Five. Plus five more is fifteen. Five. That was pretty close. Makes him twenty. Five. Twenty-five. So at the turn, they're five, uh, twenty-five shot points each. 
with uh, Peter Jam at the fire with the right hand. Move that target. His unbroken hand. Move that's that's that right, his unbroken hand. Move the target. Five. Five makes him 30. Five. And five more makes him 35, eh? Five. <laughs> five. It's 40. Five. And 45. Oh, oh, that's him. 55. Oh. Well done. A round of applause for Peter Jammer. Now it's Rod. Ted, will you stop that? Rod Grinter with your right hand, five shots. You need 26 to win. You need 26 to win. No, Rod? No, no, no. Now, wait a minute. No, it needs more than 26. Oh, you put 26. Let's just. Hang on. Hang on, just a minute, we can tell him. 31 million. You need 31 to win. All right. Let's go. Bullseye! 10. Makes him 35. Five. And five is 40. Five. And five is 45. Five. 50. Needs a 10 to win. Five. 55. So it's dead. They get First bullseye takes the target. So you go five with your. No, first bullseye. First, I'm First bullseye. First bullseye. Yes. Someone doesn't get a chance. Yes, he does. Oh, 10. Wake up. He gets a bullseye, it's all over. Well, he gets a shot then. Hello, Harvey. Move the target. Move the target. No, you don't move the target. Come on, Rod. Rod. Rod needs a 10. No, come on. Hey, incident, this guy right soon till midnight tonight. Here we go. Oh, close. Now, Rod again for a 10. Oh. Oh, God, this is exciting, isn't it? Come on, Peter. Now, lift. Peter. Oh, five. Peter, someone's head there. Ah, oh, fuck. Hey, look, carry on with the show and we'll come back tomorrow. Peter German now. Thank you for the show. Ah. Fair dick. Fair dick. How long can they take these a couple of dummies? Ah. You're better off, maybe, the target. Yeah. You're better not. better off not. Oh. I don't think we need a target. Hey! Rod Grinner's the winner, right? Well done, bad luck, Peter. Of course, you get the double up ties as Peter Tennis Racket, the uh, 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 re recreation uh, of life membership, or whatever it is, a four, and you've got to have the four and twenty pies, and now it's back to uh, my old mate Maxie Walker. A very special guest tonight on the footy show, too. Great to have Terry aboard, but also aboard tonight, Alan Jakovic. <laughs> oh, as you can hear, the Ellen Jackovich fan club in the cage tonight. Jacko, 12 goals. Unbelievable. But I like what I like about your stats the best, though. 37 kicks, four handballs. What's with the handballs? Four handballs, mate. <laughs> yep, they were, they were there, and I highlighted them out to Jace earlier on, and he still doesn't believe me. And 12 18? Yeah, that's a bit of a worry, but uh, something to work on. Yeah, well, that's OK. We'll talk about it, that a little bit later in the show. Of course, Melbourne undefeated at the moment. Going beautifully. AFL Productions present Alan Jakovic in... My Left Foot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, My Left Foot. Living at the moment too, but gee, uh, one thing for sure is that Jakovic is pretty happy because the demons are sitting underfoot on up near the top of the ladder. But let's go across now to Trevor Mar Mar Marmalade over there at the cage with the Ellen Jakovic fan club. Uh, yes, Eddie, I'm at the cage, and uh, well, we don't know why we have the cage or what purpose it actually serves, but uh, we've got the Jakovic fan club. Uh, yeah! Have a look at them, the bevy of shrinking violets that they are. Uh, and uh, mind you, a lot of girls are swinging over to football in preference to more violent sports like figure skating and squash. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, Jacko, can we get you to come over here? <laughs> just to make their night here, just to make their night. Well, Jack, how this is your fan club. You're responsible for this. How do you feel? I feel good if we just stand out of the way. And one of you girls, if you could just stand up. Blue. That's it. Yeah, get it in there. All right. And uh, you're going to get in the cage for us, Jacko? <laughs> would, you, would you get in there? 
Would I get in there? I think I'd rather wear a condom full of oven cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. All right. <laughs> Thanks well, very much, you for fish roasting it, Ed. Uh, on that note, Trevor, we'll move straight on. State selectors have opted for youth and pace around the ground in a bid to turn the tables on the Crow Eaters, who beat the Big V in last year's Origin Grand Final. Here's Jim Wilson. 18 of the 35 squad members are 25 years old or younger, and Chairman of Selectors Ted Whitten believes it's the right combination to beat the old enemy. And Melbourne Steve Tingay, and the youngest player named David Neitz, who may play his first senior state game at 19 years of age. Despite some report, an individual can get it at a cracking straight away. Let's have a look at the big game at the MCG on Saturday. What a beauty it'll be between Essendon and Melbourne. Let's have a look at the lineup for the Bombers. The new players coming in: Buick. Good to see him back in the side. Stevenson, Bomber Thompson for his first game of the season, coming back from a calf injury. Wallace and Hills going out of the side injured. O'Donnell, Doolan, and Kickett, Manton and Cransburg have been omitted. Sammy, they've lost the last two, the Bombers, against Fitzroy and St Kilda. Mercury kick three and Cockatoo Collins two, the only multiple goal kickers. They're a bit light on at the moment, the yes, Bombers. Yes, they reacted savagely to their second loss in a row. And, of course, uh, savagely. Kevin... Savagely, yes. Uh, they dropped a man, Mant, and they put him in the ruck at one stage. Uh, Salmon and Somerville weren't good enough for the ruck, so Kevin Sheedy really throwing the changes around Tim. And, of course, Fletcher, who is uh, the state fullback, or was, wasn't he? He played at centre forward at one stage, so... The state fullback? He's never played for the state. Well, it was, I was just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was half hoping that was going to be right. <laughs> 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 that's what you meant. Teal, teal, cup, teal, cup, uh, teal, teal cup fullback he is. <laughs> because, well, uh, anyhow. I, don't like, I don't like to use football cliches either, but this is a danger game for the Bombers. <laughs> we're in the van, are we? We might be in the van. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment, we're in a bit of trouble. We're just hanging on the back of the van at the moment. <laughs> but this is a, a real danger game for us, and after two losses and uh, Melbourne they're the form side I mean if they had played last week they would be the form side <laughs> yes yeah, apparently okay. they would be but they played some of their best football last week because they had the bye well they did have the bye <laughs> last week but the week before they did play their best football against um, St, St Kilda I think they belted yeah, St Kilda and they belted Hawthorne too and uh, I did predict that they, I thought they were one of the best four sides in the competition especially when you got Gary Lyon firing in the forward line and uh, Djakovic I mean he's kicked something like 10 19 All right. in the two games he's played so far. Well, before we go any further with the Melbourne side, let's have a look at the team that has been picked. No change either. The Demons, they're very confident after their early season form. They go into this, the game at the MCG against this, and with this side, of course, Djakovic averaging six goals a game and uh, going quite nicely, the Demons, at the moment under Neil Baum. Very nicely indeed. And Alan Djakovic, this is absolutely truthful, was saying that he's had in the vicinity of 2,000 shots at goal over the fortnight they've been uh, out of the competition. Uh, at practice, Neil Baum's had him down there every night kicking, and he's kicked, someone was keeping a tally, he's kicked 100, 1,900. So everything on track for another shocker next week. <laughs> <laughs> he's missed a few, hasn't he, Wayne? He sure has. Um, I, I think Melbourne actually, uh, with their on ballers, I think that's where they're winning a lot of games. I mean, their on ballers are really playing well and they're, uh, they're cutting out uh, opposition on ballers. And I yeah. think that's where they're doing really well. well I think that, um, I mean, Neil Barm was a very successful coach over in, uh, in South Australia. Norwood. And I yeah, for yes. Norwood, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, he's a very, I mean, he's a very charismatic sort of a fellow. And I, I just get the feeling that the players, um, really do play for their coach there. Trev, hey. you're happy with the Melbourne side at the moment? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, Neil Baum is, 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 uh, looks like being a good coach, but he's, uh, he's an even better TV presenter. Have you seen the, North, uh, the, the Melbourne uh, supporters uh, ad that the he's doing now? Drive. Could you get his head any bigger on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's hardly even room for the Demons logo on there. He does look like the Michelin man, doesn't he? <laughs> he's a big man. Watch out, Trevor. Watch out, he's a big man. You can tell that Tim's not playing this week, having a go at the opposition coach like that. I've never heard you slag so many people in the opening. <laughs> Five minutes. You've given everyone a run. Started yet? I'm going to start on you too. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, just a quick cor uh, correction. I'll correct myself. Uh, of course, Melbourne having played Geelong and Hawthorne so far this year, still waiting for the big game against the Saints. We'll be Melbourne back. on top with Melbourne and Collingwood, West Coast, Adelaide, Carlton, Fitzroy, Geelong, Sydney, Brisbane. Well, it's easier to just name the sides from the bottom, isn't it? And have a look on the bottom there, folks. Yes. Okay. Now let's check some of the highlights in yesterday's round. First of all, at the MCG, some pretty rough stuff. Brett Lovett and Hills. Todd Martin. Oh, Richie. Richie will go the way of Melbourne. Too. A pretty crude tackle on White there. Bombers, the reigning premiers, and Ross Glendinning. The question is, are Essendon gone? G-O-R-N. 
Well, I wouldn't say just yet, Rex. They were in a similar position last year and they managed to come through and do very well. They have, uh, I think, just lost a few players in form and a few of the younger blokes who carry them through the bulk of last year just have missed out on their form and, and the inconsistency with often comes with the young blokes is now showing a little and some of their senior players uh, Salmon's always singled out but he was very ordinary yesterday and the other bigger fella Somerville a non-contributor uh, Harvey was very consistent at centre half back but other than that heard a good start in the first quarter but Melbourne overall their just team performance was terrific every line had players winning their ferocity at the ball and then to tackle uh, Essendon was just terrific and the little things, tap-ons, shepherds, uh, smothers, I mean it just was a great team effort and I think they're going to cause a lot of teams a lot of trouble and finish very high on the ladder. What would you say, briefly, is the big difference between Melbourne last year and Melbourne this year? I just think they have got uh, a bit more stability in the side and the other good thing, Robbo too, they did it yesterday without Gary Lyon but the fellows like Meats, Swartz are slowly fitting in nicely. The Phoebe boys yesterday were just outstanding there their mid-sized players, their sort of five, their six-footers, very good. I mean, they can take an overhead grab. They're good skilled players. They, they're very strong. They're courageous. And that's the sort of player these days that's getting the ball moving through the centre. Uh, Roscoe, well, the Essendon four line had uh, only one winner yesterday in Herd. For a, half, you, for a quarter and a half. For a quarter, yes. so. Uh, would you um, persevere with Flood and maybe put uh, Paul Salmon in the ruck? Because he needs to. Uh, well, I, I've always been inclined to have uh, Salmon in the ruck more often. Uh, I know you need a target down at full forward, but Flood is an option there. I think he's probably played his best footy in the back line. But, I mean, yesterday, all those moves that Kevin Shetty often makes that often win games for him didn't work because players were out of form. One did look as though it would work. Robert Louis Stevenson went to full back. Yeah, he's, I th he's a very big chance, I think, yeah, uh, Bob. He's, uh, I mean, he's got a lot to learn. He's very young, but he's a he bloke looks... you've got to be pers persevered with. Yes. Uh, yeah, I Could agree with Fletcher that. go out the ground further? or I would have him out the ground, but then... You how far out, Bob, you've got Harvey at centre-half back. Yeah. Where are you talking about? I mean, you then if you go to centre-half back, where do you put Harvey on a flank? Perhaps not. Don't or discuss do you put... positions with Bobby. It's just a bit... Well, what about if we go to centre-half forward? Yes. But you got Heard there, so where do you put Heard? Well, why don't we put Salmon in the ruck and try and do something with Salmon, Brad? Yeah, but I mean, for stability and for the young kid to give him a chance to settle in the footy. Okay. okay. Who, Salmon? Yeah. yeah. You Thank run. you very much. Okay, before we get your votes for the Challenge Bank Player of the Year Award... Our cameras went into the Essendon rooms and our people spoke to Kevin Shooty after the game. Um, no, Melbourne are a pretty good side, you know, they've been coming on late last year. I think they uh, always one of the really quicker sides coming on at the end of 1993 and their performance so far have been excellent. Um, you know, we've once again only kicked the nine goals, so we're probably not going to win many games kicking the nine goals and I think that really... Um, we probably, that game will still probably hold us in good stead, you know, and we hopefully we'll get a benefit out of it, uh, other than the four points, but it wasn't a thrashing, we've just got to make sure we can pick up four points desperately for the club. OK, the Channel 7 Player of the Year is an absolute ripper, 20 grand. And Roscoe, your important votes for the Melbourne-Essendon game. Yes, well, the Phoebe boys were terrific yesterday. Matthew, I thought, was the best player on the ground, and uh, closely followed by his brother, Steve, and then Brett Lovett, who just had an enjoyable role through the middle and going forward, kicked the, the ceiling goal yesterday and was just outstanding. OK, Dipper, there's only room for one idiot on this panel, and you're doing a marvellous job without being personal. <laughs> it is not Stephen Phoebe, it is Matthew, but just in case I've made a mistake, I'll introduce Staffew Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, uh, you and your twin are an integral part of a very exciting era at Melbourne, but the feet firmly on the ground, I suppose? Mm -hmm. yeah. One week at a time, I think, is the operative word. Yes, Barmy, that's Words. what Barmy has been preaching, that... Uh, as soon as we win a game, he's got us into the room after the game saying, keep the food on the ground, look to the next week and uh, hopefully we can keep the, the game going. When well. the going gets tough down there, you just better come to me and I'll tell you about Neil Baum, the player at Punt Road and the troubles that he caused Tommy Hafey in his reign. But these coaches, they're terrific, aren't they? Yeah, which, I know a lot about them. Which Phoebe is it really? Because you called him Stephen there again, Rex. I called him Staffew. <laughs> Statue, That's right. Matthew Phoebe. Because you've done it before, haven't you, Matthew? You've, Matty? You, you've done an interview just, where you swapped over. Yeah, but you've just got to wait until we get a report <laughs> because I think the last time Alistair and Stuart Lord in the 1960s, of course, all, all you people weren't well, born. James Hurt and Shane Hurt. Yeah, there you are. Wouldn't you have a look at the arm because uh, Matthew's arm has been broken about 14 times, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah I kept that pretty well disguised, so I um, can't see a bandage on it, so we try and look pretty <laughs> similar out there. Well done. You seem to really be enjoying yourself playing footy. You know, 20 guys out there you know, prepared 21. to really back each other up. It's like, uh, you know, 20 mates are playing together. 21. A very, um, very close side with, um, over the last couple of years with, with Barmy's coach. We, I mean, he's got us playing the way that 
he wants us to play and everyone just suits his style of footy and it works very well. Matty, what about Doyle on the ruck? I thought he was terrific yesterday and uh, kicked a goal. He's a mobile big fellow and strong too. I mean, he contested very well against the bigger blokes he's, in Sunville Sam. very, very strong and um, he does very well on the ruck. I mean... Did he actually lay his hand on the ball in the ruck though? Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, he did a few times, yeah. Once? Well, you were in Perth, you wouldn't have seen it. He did do well, it. Well, how many times? Uh, I would have said about, uh, I would have given him half a dozen. Right. Happy with that? Yes. Ruck work of the 90s, it's brilliant, isn't it? You jump early, the ball hits the ground, and then the ruck the uh, rovers take He did very well around the ground, which Talk was important. Talk to the guest. Okay, about, Bernie, come Sean on. What about uh, Steve yes. or Matthew? Uh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Steve White, he's uh, uh, Sean White. Sean White seems to have found a new lease of life playing at uh, full back. Yeah, Sean's had a few injuries over the last couple of years, and I mean, he's got the just nat natural athlete that he is. Um, he can play on anybody of any height and he just does very well back there and um, very fearless at the ball and it's, he's got a lot of confidence at the moment he's doing very well. What's Barmy's first approach to the game? Is it strength or the skill? Um, I'd say uh, a, a on a par, on a par with each other, yeah. He doesn't really, um, a lot of talk about a composure and make sure you're um, thinking where you want to go and play a team game and predictable to each other. Yeah, Matthew, are all the players very comfortable about the daylight training? I know, uh, you know, when I was playing under the lights and that, and it was very difficult, but a three o'clock training session, has it been well received? It has worked very well. I mean, obviously for the, the reasons where if you're training late at night on a Tuesday when it's raining, it, you, a lot of injuries can occur. Yeah. So training while there's a bit, of, a bit of sun around and a bit of warmth does help. And the success or the proposed success of Neil Barm has put on hold the attempted takeover of the coaching position of Jared Healy within the foreseeable future. I didn't really know anything about that. Well, he was interested in uh, merging Richmond and Melbourne and coaching Relbin. <laughs> <laughs> Relbin. <laughs> Weren't you? Oh, yeah, definitely, Rex. Matthew, it's an exciting time and we'll watch your progress, but all the best to the Ds this year. Thanks, Rex. Matthew, Phoebe, and after the break, we're going to cover the big game football. Truly are the glamour side of the competition. They just look so good goal to goal. You've got so many more options uh, this year and they're much harder at the ball. Well, I mean, it's only very early in the season. I, mean, I don't know whether we're the glamour team. That's um, the way the press um, decided, I suppose. But I thought we've played pretty well for three games, and there's a lot of work in front of us. But um, we're very positive about the way we'll go. Simon? Well, yeah, Neil, uh, Neil definitely should be happy. I think uh, the Melbourne side we're seeing this year is not the Melbourne side we've seen for a number of years. They, they played the ball very, very well. They, I was very impressed with their tackling and the way they went in. And there, a lot, lots of times you'd see not just one tackle, but even two and three and even four tackles at one stage, dispossessing, dispossessing Essendon and turning the ball over very well. They kept the ball in the, in the, in the centre corridor a lot. Uh, both sides played very, very good football as far as the tough stuff went, I thought, but uh, Melbourne finished off a lot better. Uh, you could see it. they had a lot of uh, runners in the, in the midfield. I thought uh, Lovett did very well. Both, uh, both Phoebe brothers did very well. Djakovic scored five goals uh, uh, for them up that end, whereas Essendon down the other end did struggle to have a, uh, a full forward and actually didn't do too well until they put Flood up there in the third quarter. Salmon was disappointing, didn't take enough marks. Actually, uh, the big fellas at Essendon are uh, having a bit of a, a down patch at the moment. There's... Uh, there's Love it there doing what he was doing best, kicking goals. So this is a great goal. This is one of the highlights for Essendon Buick. He got a great goal off the ground, soccer skills, but uh, they, need, they need him around the packs. That's the type of tackling from both sides. This one, one of his poor kicks, but again, uh, Melbourne uh, getting straight on the ball. That's uh, not a bad little kick from young uh, Lamprill, a uh, new fellow for them, fairly new fellow. Uh, this fellow did well for Essendon, McCurry. He, he was one of the uh, uh, shining lights for Essendon. He kicked a couple of goals, always down on the pack. This is the type of stuff, getting the ball and delivering it very well. The type of stuff Melbourne did very well. Djakovic, a very clear forward line there. Um, yes, well, they're going to Curie again. Are Eston having problems getting themselves fired up? I mean, that's... Yeah, I think it's a little bit of that. I think there's a lot of players out of form at the moment. That's, a, that's part of it. I think they're being... Of, co of course, what happens when you're the Premier is you're watched by the opposition. You're, you, you are the measuring stick. And uh, this man's doing well, d d not doing enough. What he does, he does very well, but he needs to do enough, needs to do more. And I think there's a few players like that on the Essendon side. But uh, full credit, this type of thing. And Djakovic used his body well here. Uh, used it well, took a good mark. And, uh, do you think Essendon, because they're such a young side, their strength was probably in their, uh, uh, well, the youthfulness, they were able to keep running all day. But when things are going against them, like all these losses in a row, do you think it goes against them not having the experience to pull them out of it? The well, right option at the right time. Yeah, I, th I think that um, they missed Gary O'Donnell, but then again, Melbourne had Lyon uh, concussed in the f in the first quarter, and they missed his experience. So Thompson came back on the side for Essendon help, but you I think Gary, 
Yes, Teddy. Can I ask you a question, Simon? Please. <laughs> I think the have you stopped gyrating? <laughs> have I ever? I'm just about stuffed. <laughs> uh, there's a message. There's a message. Are just you keep out. Hey, Buffett, I'm not talking to you. I want to ask Simon a question. That uh, Melbourne side yesterday, when Essendon got to within four points, I thought showed a lot of courage the way they came back and went on to win the game. Yes, indeed. I think uh, Essendon, <laughs> one of Essendon's strengths has been that they... Uh, uh, they do fight back, and they did fight back yesterday and got within the five points, but Melbourne sort of put into another gear, really, and uh, and uh, kept going and, and uh, run out comfortable. Barmy, when out. yesterday, Melbourne's intensity, their good hands, they got a lot of real t the real tough balls that they equaled or got more of, and their pinpointing and skills were very good. There seems to be you players that are just growing up. Shut up. You look a lot fatter on television, Brownie. It's the haircut, oh. <laughs> the lack of it. The, uh, the intensity, and there seems to be quite a bit of improvement. Like last year with Lyon going off could have had a big effect on the side, and all of a sudden these guys grew in stature and took it on the chin and just went on and played strongly. Good coach, Barmy. <laughs> Real good coach, Barmy. <laughs> well, <laughs> <he'll knock laughs> <one. Yeah. laughs> um, well, yeah, I, I think um, our blokes have got a fair bit of belief in themselves. Um, I thought the first two games that we won, whilst it looked like we won nicely, I thought the thing that set the game up was that we did win the footy, the hard footies pretty well. And I reckon that's what happened again yesterday, but it was uh, but Essendon were pretty well up to the mark that, that we were, and we just got a couple of breaks on them. So I think it's the hard work that we've done is really that is the hallmark of our game rather than the, the other stuff people Very modest about. catch, uh, Oh, yeah. Young Neats, uh, you've got down in the back line. When he first came in, you tried him in the forward line as well. Has he settled in? Is that his role for good now? With, obviously, versatility will be a key to any player, but oh, yeah. is that his role for good now? No, I think he can play both ends, but he, he actually uh, heard gave him a bit of trouble early yesterday, but he really hung in there well and, and finished up, if not getting on top, doing a good job for us. Mm -hmm. um, but he is. He's well suited there because he's strong. He gets in the way. He takes a nice mark. But I think he can play up forward as well. But I mean, he's only a baby still. Yeah. Blokes like Tinga and, and these guys, Doyle, have really lifted their rating. What do you put that down to? Oh, well, Tinga had a very good year last year as well. I thought. I thought overall last year he was probably never beaten. He might have been. The work know. ethics improved, hasn't it? Oh, I know. I think I think if the one of Melbourne's great strengths has always been that it's been prepared to really work and graft, and I think we've maintained that. There were three goals, set shots by Essendon, two by Flood and one by Wallace, that when Essendon were getting back into the game could have had a bigger impact and they missed. Uh, I mean, as a coach, you, you can't really miss uh, those set oh, shots. But particularly uh, yesterday, it was a 12-9 to 9 game. I mean, it's an enormous turnaround, three goals when you've got them from right in front. Um, I think we might have, I don't know, we missed a couple. We missed a couple that we probably could have kicked as well, so I guess it evens out a bit, but they were crucial. It's better with Djakovic actually kicking five from about six or seven or seven or eight shots rather than... Uh, Kicking, say, eight from 16, you oh, a better percentage. Oh, well, it, was, it was a pretty tight game. He didn't get the opportunities uh, that he had been getting the other weeks, but I thought he did a good job, Jack. Yeah, Sam, are you scared of Neil? No, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to... Hello, uh, wherever he is. Now, what word out of the funk and wankle dictionary are you going to talk about today, Mr. Ted, Neil? there's a message just in from what the Adelaide... Message just in from the Adelaide Airport. You've left your brain on the luggage hey. carousel there. <laughs> Could you go back and get it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. I reckon that. I look like John Button there. Hey. Airhead. God, hey, listen, don't you talk about that. Hey, there's some people got a few work. What is this one? Do I know this one? I was back in the. This means that's the end, Teddy. That's we're going to go to a break, we're mate. Oh, at least I've got a bit of human for you, didn't I? Ted. Okay, uh, Neil Baum, thank you very much. Congratulations uh, so far. You've got uh, Brisbane on Friday night. Good luck for that game and the rest of the season. I'm not biased. I brag for Melbourne. The footy show continues after this break. Round coming up. Brisbane, of course, having a big win last week. Melbourne undefeated at the moment. They've made one change. Lamprell has been omitted and Primke comes in. And this Melbourne side. Now, Sam, uh, they beat Essendon by 18 points last week. Djakovic on fire with another five. Schwartz and Love at two each. But uh, it's good to see that Gary Lyon has been named in the side. However, he had severe concussion. In fact, had amnesia after the game. About 10 o'clock at night was asked uh, by the doctor whether he had children. He'd, he said no, he has. And uh, didn't even know his wife's name. And she was very upset about that, apparently. But uh, he has been named in the side. Well, Eddie, I ran into him, actually. I had a visit to the hospital after the game, I actually ran into Gary Lyon and congratulated me on the game I played and uh, <laughs> so he was in a bad way actually on Saturday night.
they asked you if you had any children, you didn't know the answer. You hadn't even, <laughs> you hadn't even had a tap on yeah, the head at that, that stage. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, taking all before them, uh, Melbourne, playing marvellous football, this particularly good side from wherever they're playing out of the Junction Oval at the minute. And they've uh, brought a young lad in, Primke, to game for a bit of height. So they've got Doyle, Steins and now Primke in the side. Is that so because of the influence down there of the ruck coach? Absolutely not. No, it would, uh, but they're going very well, let's be honest. They're all built like brick shelter sheds, a lot of them. They're <laughs> huge men. They're very big leviathans down there at the minute. They've been on the weights or something might have been on the stuff that you sell, Tim. Yeah, it might have been on that. And I did tell you at the start of the year, and you What's did that laugh for those people who don't know, Tim? We better clear this up. No, no, we don't want to talk about that. No, we don't but, want to say um, steroids, that's all. Not if you don't want to talk about that. It was Mustache you were talking about, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Um, but uh, I said to you at the start of the year, and you, you laughed at me, and that was before you actually started working there too, wasn't it? <laughs> not at all. I always laugh at you, Tim, because you're so humorous. <laughs> uh, and you were so cynical. Not at all, you know, no, but you know they're what a going cynic is, very, don't you? very well. You know what a cynic you is, don't you? Come up, you have come up against them. You wait till uh, you play them, Paul. <laughs> a cynic is someone who knows the price of everything, the value of nothing, Sam. Oh, that's very deep. Very, very I think on that note, we'll that's go to the hurtful. Brisbane that was, that was Mickey Mouse's friend who said that, Pluto. Yeah. Pluto, ah. Right, OK. Was that the same guy who Sam was interviewing the last week? Yes, exactly. Let's go to the Brisbane Bears. No change to their lineup. Uh, they had a great win last week. Uh, 53 points against St Kilda. And, uh, Rusey, gee, your mate Lynchy. Eight great goals. to see uh, the $2 million man uh, finally pull on the boots. <laughs> um, but, on a serious note, uh, an inspiration, obviously, to the team and uh, coming off an eight-week shoulder, uh, shoulder injury and the first up kick eight goals is a, is a fantastic... Stadium, the home of the San Diego Chargers. The hype and the promotion of the games here is, is so much bigger. You walk around with guys that are earning 2 and $3 million a, a year. A punter on the Chargers roster, Bennett had seen the specialist kicker's role on TV and thought it looked easy. The entire gridiron field is just 90 metres long. He can kick close to that with the wind behind him. Only now is he learning the technicalities. Pinpoint accuracy, hang time in the air and the pooch punt, a kick that bounces and stops dead. There's a lot more to it than, uh, than just uh, picking it up and kicking it. Over 78 games with Melbourne and the Eagles, Bennett was considered the AFL's longest kicker and has amazed established punters here. Oh yeah, <laughs> impressed, because there are not many guys that actually punt as far as he does, and he can really smash it a long ways. From now on for Darren Bennett, it'll be a succession of trials and camps. ...trick on Brisbane, or was it just a training run, Robert Dippier Domenico? Thanks, Rex. I think it was a train run for Melbourne. And uh, if you're Robert Walsh, you'd be thinking to yourself, you know, how can I get this side to play well here in Melbourne? And they've played 157 games here in Melbourne and only won eight of them. And that is very disappointing news for the Bears. Uh, for me, out of the middle, they've got no uh, effort to uh, put the ball up uh, and give Lynch a, a chance to, uh, to kick a goal or merit to kick a goal. They just uh, bomb the ball up for them and give them absolutely no chance whatsoever. And uh, from the half-back line through the middle and to the centre-half forward line of uh, Melbourne, they were in complete control. Robert, the uh, Melbourne medium-sized players. Now, that's one of the most... Phoebe's 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 one of the, Matthew Phoebe's. Must be one of the most improved players in the competition. I oh, certainly are. I mean, uh, between the two Phoebe boys, they had 75 possessions. And uh, Swartz had uh, taken some magnificent marks to centre-half forward. But you've got Lovett and Ops Lovett, and all these Ops. guys. They're good players. Very good players. Todd Viney and Lambert had a bit of a go at each other. And uh, at the end, school... You know, is a very important part for this Melbourne side. Matty? Dipper, the Bears had trouble manning up midfield and there was Melbourne players running rampant, picking up possessions. And I mean, it was, as you say, it was a training run, but what can the Bears do to, 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 to change that in the midfield? Well, Matty, you're from Brisbane. I mean, I'm sure these guys train together, they play together. I mean, they know exactly how to play football, but they show no sort of football knowledge together on the football field. And one thing Melbourne have got, Rex, is the four S's, Bobby. Yes. Speed, strength, Stamina and the most important thing, school. skill. School and uh, Neil Bum's a terrific um, skill. Now, Bertie. Yes, Bob. What is the reason why a team is it the titsy fly bites them at Albury or something? Get sleeping. <laughs> the titsy fly. <laughs> the titsy fly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. They get their luggage. Sydney had exactly the same thing. Exactly well, the same thing yesterday. I think I think the bears have passed. <laughs> the titsy fly. I think the bears have passed the word <laughs> of uh, attitude, or they can't play here in Melbourne. I mean, uh, only last week they had a magnificent win up in, the, up right. in Brisbane. You know, I have no idea. Uh, and maybe Matty can help us here. I mean, the well, if, I, if I knew the answer, I'd tell Walsey. Now, should they stay at home? Should they say a three-quarter time like a, like a cricket team at three-quarter time, shake hands and say, listen, what? it's all over here. I go three oh, votes to Matthew. Do this. <laughs> now they're, hang on a minute. I go three votes no. to Matthew Phoebe. No, or, you go uh, two and a half. 
and two poor father guys can actually fight with, uh, between themselves. But this is fantastic. These two boys from Devonport have made a name for themselves in AFL football, the elite class of football, and it's terrific to see the young boys. And also um, a David Neitz, who plays centre half back, played a terrific game. It'll be a bit like the Lord Twins at Geelong in your time, Bobby. Do Friday you... night at the MCG, uh, the Bears, they were no match for the Demons, led superbly by the Phoebe Twins and Alan Jakovic, who booted six goals. No picnic for the Bears, no doubt about that, Simon. That was just uh, a fantastic, crushing performance by the Demons. And if I sound <coughs> excited, I am. Yeah, they weren't a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic, they were a couple of loaves short of a picnic, uh, Max. And me any Melbourne supporters out there, line up, you'll be in the finals. And I reckon you're going to be in the last couple of weeks too because the display was absolutely sensational from the Melbourne Football Club. The Bears, I think, are struggling coming to grips with playing in a state. Robert Walls has identified that the travel side of it is, is very difficult for them to come to grips with. But Four Alan years. Jakovic, uh, I don't know exactly how to describe him. He's excitable. He is loving his football. If he learnt to kick a little straight at, uh, I think Melbourne would have won their games even by further margins. But enjoying the football, I think, is a, a major point in the Melbourne Football Club at the moment. Uh, they are just loving it. They're going hard at the ball. Take they're me. enjoying getting the goals. They're doing all the hard things. But they are really enjoying it. And, and Phoebe, the Phoebe brothers, Phoebe, love the it. Phoebes love it. Um, Viney. Viney, I mean, they just like Simon, Graham Yates. You say they're going to make it through to the last couple of weeks in the finals. What new players have they got this year that they haven't got, that they didn't have last year? And what's the difference now? And why didn't they make it last year? They That's play a different band of football. I think is one. They they are playing that a, a, a desperate under the same coach. Of football. He's improved them. Hasn't what he? under the it's same coach? It's taken a while for them to get used to the Neil Baum style. He's got them enjoying their football. Guys like Yates, White, Road, Lovett, Neitz, Dyson, Schwartz. Phoebe, Jakovic, Steins, Viney, Lovell are playing the best football so got, I've ever seen. So they got slaughtered. Is that right? They got slaughtered? The Bears yes. got absolutely slaughtered. Now, uh, Mr Newman, you said uh, up in Brisbane last week, you sort of apologised, I very did. apologetic I, to the Brisbane people about, I got about the Bears. Now, why were you like that? I got taken to task for knocking Similar the Bears. Similar to your attack of the people in Adelaide? I got taken to task for knocking the Bears and I, I actually half apologised well, to would them. would you take it back? I absolutely take it back because you couldn't believe the Bears are the side that actually beats and killed them. And, and, and the one saw positive it. of the Bears yesterday... Uh, on Friday night, I should say, Buse and Lambert came into a bit of form, well, so it was good this. to see a couple how, of the recruits. How can you say, uh, how can you... Top of the ladder, North and Collingwood, they faltered in effort to remain undefeated. Essendon in ninth position now, I think the West Coast in second, Adelaide in fourth can uh, improve their positions this afternoon. Trials and camps. Scope tonight, undergoing a fitness test for Saturday's blockbuster with Collingwood. The outcome will have a large bearing on whether the Demons can maintain their winning run. And for the latest, we cross live to Andrew Bensley. Thank you, Tony. And down here at the Junction Oval, uh, it's apart from line, there's still a couple of niggling injuries to players and joining us to tell us about them, Melbourne coach Neil Baum. Well, Neil, first of all, Gary Lyon, will he play on uh, Saturday? Yeah, he looked pretty good tonight to me, so I, th I think he'd be uh, a sure player. St Stephen Tingay? Well, there's a couple. Um, Steve Tingay, Brett Lovett that, uh, and, and Steve Phoebe, to a degree, right. are some slight doubt, but we're uh, hopeful that they'll all play. Will you pick them tonight? Yeah, I reckon we will. We haven't got the final result from the Medicos yet, but I'm pretty sure we will. Brett Lovett didn't train tonight. Uh, I guess, you know, he's looking fairly remote, is he? Or? Oh, I know. He, um, he had a bit of a problem with his foot and ankle on Tuesday, so it's only been a couple of days, but he, he's uh, pretty confident he'll be OK. And you'd be confident going in. You're unbeaten. Collingwood, one loss. Uh, a traditional big clash on Saturday. Oh, it'll be a great game. It's one that we're very much looking forward to. Your big uh, forward line, your tall, that uh, could, con could cause a concern. Well, if it works, it will. If it doesn't work, well, we'll have to change it, of course, but uh, we should be right from that point of view. All right, good luck. Thanks, Andy. Neil Baum joining us here, and let's go down to Victoria Park with Eddie Maguire. Thanks very much, Andrew. And the news is Melbourne, of course, the match of the day on Saturday out at Waverley Park. It should be an absolute beauty. Collingwood, of course, uh, some say unlucky, some say not quite up to it against Essendon last week. Melbourne undefeated on top of the ladder. These are the ins and outs for the Collingwood side going into the big game. Craig Kelly back after a series of boils, which is very unpleasant. Sanford is out injured with a hamstring and Shane Kerrison, one would think for that uh, now famous handball has been dropped from the Collingwood side, Sam. Golden Staff, that must be the first time anyone's ever been out or been in because of Golden Staff. And the laughing assassins back at uh, centre half back, Craig Kelly, nice to see him back uh, earning his keep down there. And Collingwood were sensational last week against Essendon, they played great football, they had rocker kicking goals, they moved the ball well, they were fantastic out of the centre. Everything went, they just couldn't win the game, Collingwood. Unbelievable, I mean, uh, Essendon 
played pretty poor football and staggered into win. So where does that leave Collingwood, Alan? I don't know, Sammy. I saw the uh, game from Perth. I watched the highlights in Perth. Um, and I watched the last quarter and I was very impressed with both sides. I thought they both uh, bought in and hit the ball extremely hard. It was uh, reminiscent of uh, the game that we played against Essendon and I think that we'll be up for an, uh, uh, the same sort of task this week. I think that uh, the, ball won't, or the game won't be won until uh, the, 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 the bell at the very end. I would venture to say, uh, Doug, I <laughs> yes, would venture to say Sam. that uh, Collingwood, great and all as they well, were, if they couldn't have won that game with Eston playing like they did, it S could be the beginning of the end for Collingwood. Sam, it's good to see Craig Kelly back in. Did he have a yes, game in two last we week? Or no, straight back he, in after. Straight the, back in uh, after about the eight, two weeks. months, yeah, eight yeah, weeks. Exactly. So that's a big effort. And it's great to see Tony Shaw edging away to that 300 games. And he's four more games to get there. And I'll tell you, once he gets past his 300, he'll be a, a lot better player for it. And Collingwood still without Pert, McGuan, Rowe, Christian and Sanford. So still a pretty big injury list down there at Collingwood. Melbourne, well, they are riding on the crest of a wave at the moment. And these are the new players coming in. And not too bad either. Two Victorian state representatives there in Gary Lyon, who had concussion. And Stephen Tingay, who was suffering from bruised buttocks, going out of the side. Lamperell and Sullivan omitted. And... Uh, well, Sam, we, <laughs> Stephen Tingay's uh, injury is probably no indication of the form that Melbourne's in at the moment, really, is it? No, bruised buttocks and... Uh, You're playing uh, with a fair bit of it at the moment, are you? Exactly right, and they were... Uh, he, he contracted them down at the carousel. That wasn't even a gym. <laughs> uh, uh, now, uh, Stephen Tingay, very strong and powerful man, Stephen. You've seen him recently, he's got muscles on his dandruff. He is huge <laughs> and uh, unbelievably big he is. And, uh, of course, Gary Lyon back in, the captain of the Demons, and what a fantastic man he is. He's back in the side and uh, they, with consummate ease, uh, Jason swept the Brisbane Bears aside last week and it was uh, actually sad really to see it happen. It was. They're a very good side, Melbourne. I think we've all become aware of that and uh, particularly any team that can be undefeated on top of the table and bring back Lyon and Tingay, uh, things must be going right down there. And did, go ahead. No, did you think that uh, Collingwood would have any chance against Melbourne at this particular stage, uh, I Jason? Would, I would have to go with Melbourne, Sam. I think uh, Collingwood had their chances last week and really didn't take them. Alan, 87 possessions more than the Brisbane Bears last week. The possession game at Melbourne, obviously, that's the, the focal point at the moment. You won by 87 points, a nice coincidence there. Do you think you're finally starting to get into what Neil Baum wants you to play each week? The start? I think so, yeah. I think we're coming... Uh, uh, to the party, so to speak. Uh, we've trained very hard through the off-season like every other team, but uh, it's just starting to come together for us now, and uh, hopefully that'll just continue. Just, just finally, just give us one of those. Go on, give us one of those. <laughs> no, what is it? <laughs> what is it in the goal? <laughs> it's that just go move. <laughs> give us one, just a go quick on, one. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't go like that. Doesn't, doesn't go like that. that. Oh. It's Saturday night fever. Yeah. John Jabal look out. <laughs> you idiot. Well, six last week for Alan Jakovic. He's now kicked 23-22, and after the break we'll be back to speak with more with Alan Jake. 15 minutes, they were uh, quite poor, really. Could you feel them dropping off in intensity at all, or was there no intensity from yeah, the start? Yeah, they were. I think they're starting to believe in the fact that they can't win away from home, you know, they because they looked very powerful the week before, and we, we all watched that game. And, uh, you know, last week they were second to the ball, and uh, uh, being out there and amongst it, they, they didn't seem to really talk or communicate mm -hmm. with one another, and... Uh, you know, there's a bit of bagging going on and so forth. What, what, a, what a bottom side does, really. You know? I really think that they've got into a habit of losing, particularly away from home. I think it's habitual. Oh. That's it. <laughs> Come on, Stephen. Alan Jeffrey, I think, has an injury on Stephen. his hamstring, doesn't he? Lift. Has a uh, mystery hamstring problem. Jacket. Jacket. Alan? Sorry? You have a mystery hamstring Stop problem, do you? No, no. No problem? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, about this week's apart. And see how you go. Reaching forward. We've just tuned in. There's two girls and a bloke doing a workout over here. <laughs> Some girls should be. <laughs> yep. Good girl. Oh, I for fear of having Alan Jacobitz have a go, this is the new Melbourne Dietary Book. It'll be out in a few weeks' time. We'll be back with the footy show next week. Join you then. As Steve comes in and uh, he set you a bit of a task there, Steve. Yes, yep, yep, seven. Very good, uh, very good score, so I'll uh, do my best to try and beat it. All right, and uh, big game against uh, the Magpies this weekend? Yep, very big game, so hopefully Melbourne can continue on in their unbeaten form. Hope you're even a flogging, mate. Uh, turn around, yep. and when the hooter starts, you are away. In comes the first ball. Wait for that hooter, Steve. Wait for it. There we go. Gloves one up there. Policy to get off the backboard in this game, I find. Oh, yeah, that's the way to go. 
He's got one from three, two from four. He's found his eye. Phoebe in for the last shot and all oh, off the rim for a score of two. He trails after the basketball section and in with the putting. Sometimes they do it. Ooh. Sometimes they take this a little bit casually, but the, it often comes down to the golf. It's all oh, in we come for a score of three. Stephen in there and oh! And a beautiful swale there on the green here for a score of four, which means he needs four out of a possible five through the target. There is one for a score of six. Five for a score of seven. And to win. Stephen has a spot on his face, so this is Stephen, so we were just checking. Just got a little mole there, see? So if, that's... I, if I won, I was Stephen. If I lost, I was Matthew. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, and the winner is Stephen Phoebe, which means that the, both the guys receive a free promo for the footy show, yes? <laughs> the, uh, the footy show shirt here. That's what that looks like. There you go, one each for the fellas. And, of course, our winner at the end of the year wins this fabulous prize. And on top, Melbourne. What about that? The uh, side that just dominated the 50s and 60s back up there again with the perfect record, West Coast Adelaide, North Melbourne and Carlton Collingwood Fitzroy and Richmond make up the eight. Let's make a final 20. We'll all get in there. Out there, disappointing crowd of 47,000. Well, the standard of the game, I thought, Rex, early was a bit untidy. There's uh, quite a few skill errors, which was, I think, due mainly to the pressure Melbourne applied to Collingwood. But Melbourne also had about 50 more possessions uh, throughout the course of the game, which has been their style in the last couple of years. And they do use the ball very well. Perhaps you could suggest that when you overuse the ball and a few of your players drop out of form, then you do get the ball back. However, their form across each line is just very consistent. And midfield, again, they were quite dominant. Half forward of Collingwood is a real worry. They don't have someone there who can stand up and take a grab, take the pressure off Rocker. And Rocker was goalless, went into the ruck in the second half to try and give them some spark. But again, the crucial area of the game where it's won or lost through the centre and rebound off halfback, Collingwood just struggled. Mark Fraser playing screen there was well held by Matthew Phoebe. And Darren Cowell did a very good job on Paul Williams, who really only got into the game in the last quarter. Craig Kelly on screen went off, on and off the bench for most of the day. And whilst Monkhorst probably won the taps, they were ineffectual, and I think Jim Steins' work around the ground again just typified his efforts of normal, particularly in the last quarter when he was needed. Dyson, a player who's come in, he's a very good kick at the football, and when you get the ball and kick like a David Hart from the Eagles, kick it 40, 50 metres out of defence into attack, it's just very, very critical. And I think Melbourne are to be applauded. I think Gary Lyon and Barmy perhaps indicated after the game they thought they were lucky to steal it. I thought they were the best tight on the day and should have won the game. The gap between the free kicks... I don't believe that football supporters have the right to say it's got to be 30 all. I say if the free kicks are there, well, look, and, and to me, Melbourne made the play and deserve them. Rex, in days gone by, there were 70 free kicks paid in a game. I mean, yeah. there were lots of free kicks paid. Now, OK, you let the game flow, don't hold it up. But if there's a free kick to be given, you've got to pay it. I mean, that's what they're there for. Pushes in the back, nudges, all that stuff. If the free but, kick's there, you must pay it. But, but the, 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 the call has gone up. out that we're getting too ticky touchwood. but it's a bit like speed cameras. If it's there, how can you argue with it? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. If it's yeah. there, you've but, got to pay Pay. Have you ever seen a game where it, where it can really be that lopsided? I mean, these, these decisions that are given where they're tiggy touchwood, there's a lot of them, and if they all seem to go to one team, wouldn't you think that was unfair? No, not really. If the team is playing with confidence and puts their body in and goes first for the ball, the man going what, for the ball... What, do you reckon the other team times... in, a, in, a, in a game that's only decided by five points... The team but, that lost the, or had the less free kicks... Oh, I don't know. But I the flip side of that, Robbo, is logically, if a side's 20 goals in front of the scoreboard, there can also be a disparity in the free kicks given. And perhaps, I mean, you see it at half-time where there's a, there's a difference. And there must be some sort of collusion because only, at the end of the day, yeah. there's always... There was only five points in it. Let's pick up this brown biz. Only five points in it. I thought the scoreboard flattered Collingwood. I thought they came home with a wet sail. But this is the one everyone's talking about. There you are, and that is the photo finish. And I tell you what, the rabbit might have run, but the first greyhound with the nose passed has got the decision. And let's not what forget, too, that the umpire makes the decision in his mind when he's heard the, the siren. He yeah. then takes and another four or five seconds to blow the whistle, put his arms up, which is what a lot of people took as the time as when 
the ball was kicked. Yeah. So, I mean, they've got to realise it's the decision in the umpire. The rules of the game, KB, is when he hears the siren. That's what umpire Coates did. Sure. And four marks to the youngster. He's only a young kid. Yeah. He's following his old man's yeah. footsteps. And good luck to him because he certainly had those things that hang. But right, you know, didn't he? He really had a lot of them to, to sort of make that decision. Well, I think that uh, we should give him full marks because uh, we often criticise the umpires uh, not being forceful enough or not making the right decision. But yesterday, in, in probably the... Uh, well, the biggest game of the round, he's made a fantastic decision, which has been just a split second, and he's got it right. And Get your Kevin, votes. And and Kevin, we're arguing about that the umpires are wrong giving... Challenge Bank Award. Thanks, Rex. Well, I gave three to Todd Viney. I thought uh, his game, uh, one of those players who gets a lot of the ball and sometimes isn't noticed, but I thought his work was just outstanding. Jimmy Stein's uh, just, again, his work ethic, but also that when he gets the ball, he actually gets some result from it. And Stephen Phoebe just continues on in great form and, again, was a very good player yesterday. Jimmy Stein's has joined us. Uh, and, Jim, I said that the scoreboard flattered Collingwood. There's only five points. You would have been terribly disappointing. Disappointed to lose it on the last kick of the day after controlling the game for most of the the day? Yeah, definitely. I, although I didn't think we played as well as we have been playing, um, you know, Collingwood put us under a lot of pressure, but you now we stuck in there, and especially being ahead by four goals in the last quarter, um, it would have been really, really disappointing to lose. The arrival of young Doyle seems to have uh, lessened your load, uh, and you're following a lot more. Are you feeling a lot more comfortable about that? Yeah, well, it gives me a chance to, you know, sort of not, not be as predictable as, as what I have been the last yeah. couple of years. Um, at times, you know, I Obviously, you know, the personal ambitions get in the way sometimes, but yeah. uh, it's great to have him there. And just he also puts a lot of pressure on the for, in, in our forward line when he's, when he's having a rest down yeah. there. Jimmy, uh, a comment about uh, a preference, whether you'd prefer to play at Waverley or the MCG? Oh, well, no I'd, drama? I I'd, I'd, I'd believe would, the MCG is the best ground in, in would, Australia. Would, so. would Waverley and the conditions that prevail out there have anything to do with the fact that the team's only kicked 17 goals yesterday? No, I think yesterday's the problem was forward lines. We we lacked um, ability, goal kicking ability, especially when, when Jacker was off. He was a bit of an injury. Went off the ground, and same with Collingwood. We kept Rocker. Like Sean took him out of the game, so they had no one to kick goals. So I think that was the reason why it was low, so, such a low scoring game. Jim, now that Sean's come back into prominence, let's go back when you first came over. I believe he had a contract when he was a little fellow at 14 to go to one of the clubs somewhere else. Did you have a contract like that? With the same ability? So he had a contract He had a 14. contract to go to one of the soccer, soccer clubs, oh, soccer. when he was young? Um, I, I think he went and had some trials when he was, when he was a kid on a junior list. Yeah. yeah but he, I, I believe he would have made it in the soccer league for and, sure. And yourself? The same no, style of thing? No, not, not soccer. Uh, Only in Gaelic? Gaelic footy and yeah. rugby, maybe. Jimmy, what about uh, Glenn Lovett? Uh, had a few games down the reserves. Can you see him? I mean, it's very tough, I know, because your midfielders are playing so well, but yeah. there must be a spot for him there, surely. Yeah, especially after yesterday, there was, you know, as I said, we were a bit, little bit disappointing. We didn't play up to standards, and I'm sure he'll come into the side. Uh, he's been very unfortunate not to be in there. Like, he's been our most consistent player for two years, last two years. And, you know, it's a big bonus, though, isn't it? Having him oh, sitting outside. You know, like, he, he's, I believe he'd be on a state team, probably, mm. if, he, if he had been playing. So that's the sort of player we got coming back in. Jim, give us an insight uh, before the game. What areas of Collingwood's game did Neil Baum outline to the to the Melbourne players as being their strengths? Well, yeah, Baum is, is quite good in that, that area. He really, um, you know, he, he works very tactical, but also emphasises certain players. And you know, obviously Buckley was one player that we had to keep quiet. Brown is another one. Um, we had to prevent Rocker from getting the ball. Um, delivered to him easily. So really around the middle of the ground was, was where we, we believed the game was going to be won and lost. Mm. And um, our running players just played you know, absolutely brilliant, like Dyson and Phoebe and, mm. and Tinga and, and Viney and these sort of guys. And, and they were just in there all day long. And as much as our skill level was a bit down in the day, we just kept getting in there and doing the hard things. And I just kept, you know, you just grind away and, and um, we got the result we were looking for. Jim, you're one of three players uh who will perhaps represent uh, Victoria in the ruck on the weekend, and you're a type of player that runs a lot of miles during a game. How are you going to cope with the, the requirement of three big games in uh, probably eight days or seven days? Um, good, appropriate question to be asking now. Um, I, I, well, it, you know, we've done it in the past. I think we've been, I've been doing it now for five or six years. And, you know, I enjoy it because it, the difference really is just focusing on the games and um, it's sort of, you, you really do spend the whole week just thinking about football. Um, but yesterday, you know, I pulled up pretty well, so 
you know, I, and, and it's a good challenge. I, I look forward to challenges like that. So. Well, talking about challenge, they're putting up $20,000. We're going to check the progressive and last week's votes, but uh, you're on top of the pack, Jim. Congratulations. Keep it going. We'll talk to you later on in the year. Thank you, Rex. Jimmy Steins, the Brownlow medalist, of course. Challenge Bank, $20,000 award, last week votes. Let's check them. There it is, Wayne Carey, a runaway bolter. I tell you what, he's really coming in pretty tight for the Brownlow medal. As long as he doesn't biff anyone, he is, looks like home. 11, and, well, one of the, well, look at the both Phoebes. Who can say they can't do a Lord Twins job? Djakovic is there, and some pretty good uh, players. And the current Victorian skipper, Gary Lyon, is there as well. He'll be my special guest on I'm Rex Hunt, and you're not. After Richard, the... but this is Gary the Lionheart, and let's be honest, he's a little heady with the aroma of success after a handful of early wins. In fact, the days are balmy. How is the coach, incidentally? Oh, the coach is going along very well, Sam. I think uh, having won a few games this year, he'd be enjoying it a lot more than uh, last year when he hadn't had one on the board at this stage. And we can remember his name, of course, can we? I can remember his name. You, you always remember the important people on the coach. You've got to remember his name. But you did have a little trouble with the amnesia. In fact, you couldn't remember your wife's name. I did have a, a little bit of trouble, Sammy, but as you could appreciate having just the one wife, unlike your good self, it's easy to remember these things. <laughs> <laughs> so can you remember what's happening next Tuesday, Gary? I can, yes. Uh, the big game against South Australia over there, the State of Origin game, which is always an exciting time. You might be captain of the side, Gary. I would, wouldn't think so, Sammy. I just uh, would very much like to be a part of it, because I think that uh, you know, we can beat those boys over there. But still, you'll be able to chat about life in general with Teddy Whitten? Yes. Well, if that opportunity comes along, I'll certainly jump at that, because he's a fine philosopher. Now, some quick word association. Mastermind. Oh, Alan Jakovic, one of the great minds of our modern times. Football park. A low IQ level collectively. That's what you wanted me to say, wasn't it? <laughs> Members of the MCC. A fine, upstanding bunch of ladies and gentlemen who are prepared to stick with us through the good times and the bad. Well, the captain of the Ds, the mighty Ds, has passed with flying colours. Thank you very much, Gary. Always a pleasure, Sam. Actually, I thought he had your measure there, Sam. Sam. <laughs> a philosopher Sam, too, Ted. Yeah. Sam, that's true. The Demons got home by five points. The total of 17 goals on a perfect day was an indication of a rather low standard contest. And right in the thick of things was prize recruit and one of the Magpies' best players, Nathan Buckley. Every game, I thought Melbourne played very complacent football. They tried to do far much far too much with the ball when it wasn't necessary when it absolutely wasn't necessary and there's uh, Craig Kelly back in the harness after being out injured played a reasonable game came off the bench a couple of times but did some good things and Alan Djakovic uh, one of the few good things Alan did because because he injured himself and came off the ground so uh, they'll wait with bated breath the demons to find wait. out now here's a, a nice piece of rebound football from a mistake that Melbourne made from an unnecessary hand pass in the first place and I thought the difference between these two sides was that uh, Melbourne played uh, unnecessary football to a certain extent. And there's the great man himself, the captain of Victoria, uh, coming out and uh, kicking a goal. And I think we'll see, and there's a great mark, an absolutely marvellous mark by uh, David Schwartz, who kicked uh, three goals for the game. And that there is a tragedy. Uh, Gary Lyon, in the, in the end, took a, a, a very good mark. But... Uh, um, Ballantyne just uh, did his crucial ligament just in the course of action. Um, finally, uh, you'll see this goal here. That was from a, uh, an advantage rule paid which stunned all the Melbourne players because the ball, they were waiting for it to go right back. That was the first goal that they kicked in the revival. And the only mistake Sean White made there was when he came out to tackle someone else's man. He came out to tackle Severio Rocker instead of staying on his opponent uh, Watson. Or, uh, yeah, staying on his opponent Watson. That depends and Dermot, on how you've been coached. And Dermot, right. never leave your man to go and no, tackle that, someone that else's depends. man. What? Oh, that you depends. You've got to you go, go and meet the man. man. I tell you what, if you ask someone just to do a reflexive, instinctive thing, and that's hand pass over an opponent's head, they'll do it every time without having to think about it. But the further they run, the more trouble they'll have wondering what to do with the ball. Exactly. Nathan, I believe think, if somebody's going to do that, you run out and meet them, you're yeah, going to get the ball go over your head anyway, just, uh, and then you run through the incident them. You're, an, you're, <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> a modern day <laughs> guy. Went on is no good, they're weak. I didn't say that. I never said they were weak. I would never say Collingwood were weak ever. You're never right, right I, wrong, are you? Never you wrong. Were, no, I, I concede that I no, said didn't that they're an ordinary football You didn't say they had courage. I didn't say they're weak. They have tremendous... I didn't say they didn't have courage. I said they have tremendous commitment, but they have not much 
quality content in their football yeah. at the minute and that was exemplified yesterday if you don't think that Melbourne were twice as good a side as Collingwood yesterday oh, even with alone. even with all the mistakes that Look, Melbourne Sam, made I don't think you know much about under football a goal. you just say Pardon? things for they the sake of saying it they won by under a goal headache, through absolutely here. complacent play by Melbourne, who just did far too many things with the ball and wasn't necessary to with do as many thing. things with the ball. With no, full no, no, Rex Hunt, you're not. I'm going to get serious for a moment because our next two guests are pretty serious and there's no time to talk to the audience at all. Now, Joel, I see you're learning up the pies over there. Just demanding a few, Rex. Gary Ply, you've come in here, mate. He's got a Kenworth truck, mate. We haven't got that many. <laughs> Quite amazing. My next uh, two guests come in unison. Not only that, they come on the screen together. Our first is the newly appointed, just wet behind the ears, newly appointed captain of Victoria. And the other one is Rex's Rookie of the Week, who unfortunately has had to pull out of the Big V. He is a very, very good player with North Melbourne. First of all, Gary Lyon from Melbourne and Anthony Stevens from North Melbourne. <laughs> First of all, to Gary Lyon, it, uh, it must be a great honour for you to lead the state. Uh, you, you're a, a typical boy who has come through the right channels to reach the game at the highest level, and it must be a dream come true, although bad luck for Ruzi. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a tremendous blow that we, we're missing out on a play of the calibre of Paul Ruse, but it's uh, certainly a, a great honour and a terrific thrill from my point of view to, to have been given uh, the job of leading Victoria Tuesday night. And of course, you know, when bad luck comes, of course other people have good fortune. Anthony, you must be really disappointed because you're playing very very well you, you, you're making your name as a very very good player for North Melbourne it must be disappointing for you yeah I'm very disappointed Rex you know I went out yesterday hoping that I'd get a game in the big side but it didn't happen it's it a disappointing me. against West Coast yesterday the side off the boil at the moment you have to remember what made you a great side and how's Pagan approaching the situation at the minute oh, yeah, we went out yesterday and our you know we didn't win in the center and our bowlers and that yep. weren't getting the ball down the forward line so you know we really got to work out did you have some training with the state squad before you were injured? Yeah. Were you impressed with the way it went on? Yeah, I was very nice. Were you impressed with Ted Witten's stare? Yeah, and his handshake. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Did, did you really want to play for Victoria, despite what Dennis Pagan said today, that as long as his players don't get injured? Oh, definitely. I, yeah. So great honour to play for Victoria and yeah. it's a dream come true. Gary, how many big V's have you won? Uh, I think seven or eight, Rex. And what is your personal opinion of state of origin football? Oh, look, I, I'm a big fan of state footy. I think it uh, you know, remains one of my highlights of the year. You know, yep. to get together with the calibre of players that we have at, in our team at the moment. And uh, it's, a, it's a big thrill. And look, come Tuesday night, we'll have a team of committed boys that uh, are very keen to play and will we'll equip themselves well. There has been a lot written about the, the tremendous time involvement for you guys to play footy. Perhaps in hindsight, with 22 rounds, we could have placed a weekend aside where we had nothing else but state of origin football. I got the fingers burned in Melbourne last year, but certainly Adelaide have been magnificent in their support of the concept. Yeah, they have. Look, they always come out in their droves over there, and it was disappointing last year. I mean, we, we did put that week aside, and uh, to only draw 30-odd thousand was, was, a, was a major disappointment. Yeah. But, look, state footy's got its place, and, you know, I guess uh, with all the controversy this week, it'll be looked at again, and just trying to slot it in is, uh, you know, what they'll be trying to do. Anthony, it's almost a worn record now that football is 90% from the shoulders up, but it must give you great confidence to see a player like Kerry lead the side from the front. He was just magnificent again, again yesterday you didn't win the contest but it must give you great confidence you young kids oh Wayne Carey's this a uh, magnificent play you know you know you just get the ball down to him and he's just takes he some marks, yeah. what what, what uh, path did you travel to make the North Melbourne seniors uh, originally Through the under 19s did you yeah come from prep for the under 19s yeah reserves, the seniors. yeah and do you have some long-term goals do you, do you want to play 100 games and 200 games or how many do you want to play Oh, play 100 games. Tell you what, it's worth playing 200 because every year we get together and the crayfish is fantastic. <laughs> like Gary, you're, I think you're just about there, aren't you? Oh, no, I've got a 40, 50 odd to go. Actually. Yeah, it must it's have been nice. uh, tremendous yesterday. A disappointing crowd for you, but Collingwood have always been a great adversary of Melbourne going back to even before you were born. Yes, we're all you know, very much aware of the, the tradition that goes with the game against Collingwood and uh, we were happy to get away. I mean, some uh, cynics said the only thing better would have been to beat them by a point, Rex, which I thought was probably a bit cruel. Oh, you wouldn't be cruel to Collingwood, would you? 
Certainly not. Would but have they, taken they certainly make the competition like the Adelaide Crows and uh, West West Coast. That, that's what it's all about. You know, you can barrack for who you want to. I want to thank you guys, especially uh, Gary, and wish Gary Lyon all the very best as he takes our troops into battle against the Crows. Well, it's not the Crows, it's South Australia, of course, on Tuesday night. And Anthony Stevens is our Rookie of the Week. Raquel. $250 to spend there, Andrew. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Anthony. Anthony. And how would you spend that, mate? On Raquel, I think, Rex. Yeah. You think on Raquel? <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what. There'll be more after the break because when I get the flick, it'll be his Gary Lyon and I'm not. He's <laughs> taking away the show back shortly. <laughs> Versus North Melbourne is the first match that we're going to have a look at. Well, Melbourne, they hung on against the Magpies. Here are the ins and outs. Lovett, Pike and Sullivan. It's Lovett, uh, of course, the best and fairest winner from last year. Out of the side goes Djakovic, injured with a calf injury. Hilton and Rod Grinter, who, as I admitted, Grinter didn't get much of a go last week, Sam. But the Demons did, and they held on to beat Collingwood by five points. And rightly so. They should have beaten them by 55 points. Uh, now, Gary Lyon would be... You wouldn't think Gary Lyon would play, would you, uh, Jason? He went down as if shot. Shot in the uh, yes. Tuesday game. With a, uh, the a heavily court thigh, they tell me. Yes. And also Doyle in the forward pocket went off with a pretty severe shoulder injury. He yes. was under a cloud as well, so uh, there might be a few late changes. And of course, there, Alan Jakovic out. He's got the pain threshold of a whip fly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's he out for? He's got a bruised, what? A bruised calf. A bruised calf. You have mm. anything more ridiculous than that? <laughs> Alan, where are you, man? Lift, come back. <laughs> this is ridiculous. A bruised calf. Mm. Anyhow, he's out, And uh, but Gary Lyon would be the one to watch. Let's hope he plays. And this is apparently their best start to a season since 1972 when they won the first six. And you know what happened after they won the first six? They missed the finals. So let's hope it's not an omen, Doug. They will get beaten, Sam, by North Melbourne. I'm right. tipping North Melbourne. They are due to burst their bubble. Before we go to North ah, Melbourne, uh, the they fact are. that Jakovic is out Melbourne last week, fellas, yes. uh, last week uh, Melbourne only able to kick nine goals six despite uh, totally dominating that game, Sam. And uh, fellas... Oh, yeah. uh, We'd be happy to be able to kick nine goals six at the moment. Yeah. Now, I I, look, I, actually, you, you made a statement last week about um, being a, a terrible game, a Which poor one? spectacle, the Melbourne game, the Melbourne Collingwood game. Yeah, I said yes. I, I just think you, that you're underestimating the, the pressure that, pressure that some of the me? games have been played under. No. Still, it was a perfect day for footy. It was, I mean, it, there was no wind. Well, it was a perfect... 20 degrees, it was sunshine, a, 17 was, goals total. It was a perfect night for football the other night too, and still the sides didn't kick many goals. It's a bit There's of a difference between night and day footy though. Well, yeah, the lights were on. Even you can tell. <laughs> the sun's not shining. I know that, Jason. I'm with you, Timmy. I think there's a lot of pressure. Oh, rubbish. I'm glad no, you're I'm with you, mate. We, uh, we never said there wasn't a lot of pressure. Uh, you look like you, a bit like Gerard Dabadee tonight. <laughs> oh. um, whatever his name is, you do. You got from Marlon Brando to that frog act. What's his name? Gerard Kermit. I'm on the white elephant man. Uh, no, you haven't looked like elephant man yet. Um, I, we, we, we know there's pressure in the game, but I mean, it was, was, wasn't great. No, but you, under, you underestimate the pressure. Do I? Yeah. You've been out of the game too long. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, fellas, to the North Melbourne lineup, and North Melbourne have made a few changes too. And Trevor will be uh, coming over to you in a second for your opinion. But we'll just go to the uh, North Melbourne lineup here. Coming into the side, man, McKernan Campbell. Uh, Campbell is the son of. He's coming for his first game. Warren Campbell is the son of the WA great Basil Campbell, and impressed kicking five goals for the Northern Territory, the Aboriginal All-Stars game against Collingwood in the pre-season. Out of the side, John German and Romero. And McKernan, a great effort. Uh, he had a pin removed from his broken finger only last week and he's straight back into the side. They expected him to miss six or seven. He is a seamstress and uh, that's how he got the pin. Um, <laughs> he is a terrific player, McKernan, doing very well, was doing very well until he was injured. And of course, interesting to see that the Germans, the Romans and John are out. Uh, <laughs> bad luck for him. And could Wayne Carey lift? What's wrong with the boy? Could he actually fire up a bit and inspire he, them. He He's just having an ordinary year. Brownlow by that far, it's not funny. Right, have a go Tony Lockett for doing hand gestures to the crowd. This bloke who's back in the side for Melbourne, Alan Jakovic, he might be rubbed out for the rest of his life, I think. But uh, Jacko's back, Hilton is back, so too Grinter, Lamprol and Norris going out. Cal, who has broken his collarbone. Andrew Obst, who was one of the casualties last night at the tribunal, rubbed out for one week. Well, Melbourne, they suffered their first defeat last week, North Melbourne, by 32 points. Lyon was out with an ankle, or went off with an ankle injury, but uh, he's still been picked in that side, so he's got a cork thigh, a bad ankle. Jakovic is back after one week from a hamstring injury, so there's still got to be a few question marks, Sam over the potency of their forward line, although Schwartz at Tanar Ford kicked three last week. Yes, playing very well, Schwartz. And uh, they say they're not overly worried about the loss last week. I mean, they would rather have won, but they're not overly worried because they think they can get back on some sort of a uh, winning streak because they've now worked out just what the fine-tuning on the forward line was. 
yeah. if you can understand any of that. And Alan Jakovic, back after you. Well, was it you, Tim, said they had the uh, pain threshold of a whip fly? That was you, wasn't it? Uh, he took exception no. to that. I was speaking to him during the week and he said he will be back and yeah. he will be good. I know how to beat Melbourne. You've got to watch the Phoebes. I'm not sure which one, which one of them it is. Though. Yeah, I know. I can tell you that. Stephen like Phoebe Phoebe's will win the Brownlow. Right I'm not sure which one it is. Matthew Partsy's here on the left-hand side. Well, there's a fair chance that one of them might win the Brownlow this year because I think the umpires think they pick up 60 possessions each week. Let's go to the Footscray side. Simon well, Atkins is that. back in town. I know, but they couldn't understand you, Tim. It's hard to translate for them. Atkins is back. The big axe is back after he copped the big axe uh, when uh, your old mate Alan Joyce came to the club. Uh, Dermot Smith is in and Reynolds. No omissions yet because they've got a couple of days to decide on their side. And Sam Footscray, well, last week, 37-point victors over the Brisbane Bears. And Alan Joyce came out with the line of the year from a coach. He said he was happy to get the four points. He did, and of course, uh, it was a great victory over the Bears, but the Bears are a very underrated side, and deservedly so. And uh, so I wouldn't say... <laughs> I wouldn't say that uh, anything startling there in the wind, but of course, what did you, now that we've got you on the panel, Dermot, what did you think about the Joyce appointment to Footscray? Sledging. Melbourne, of course, are playing in this game, believe it or not. And he is back. Big Jakovic at full forward. Alan Jakovic back. So too, Obst and Sullivan going out of the side, all omitted after last week's uh, loss. Dyson, Norrish and Peter Rode, who has been omitted. Lyon kicked five last week. Schwartz was their best with uh, three goals. And Melbourne have now lost two on the trot. And Neil Baum said last week was their worst game against Footscray. Well, they had 141 hand passes to... Um, uh, well, they had 52 eight, more than Footscray. 89 hand passes to Footscray. And that's where they came undone. And a bit hard to criticise the club you're working for. But that's where they uh, came undone. And I wanted to ask you this, Dermot. Seriously, mm. now what has Ron told you to do when you play? And... Uh, you're going to play at centre-half forward. Changes in the side too. Ed Considine and Holmes coming in. Out Luff O'Mittal, Creswell who's ill and Chapman who has also been dropped. This is the lineup with with Dermot at centre-half forward. And uh, when you look at the goal-to-goal uh, -goal lineup, uh, you'd uh, like to be at full-back for the Sydney Swans because the last two weeks the full forwards have kicked 25 goals on the uh, full-back at uh, Sydney. So uh, Dunkley, good luck. The injury list oh, gets bigger too. and bigger. Um, I don't know. Melbourne toyed with the undermanned Saints out of Waverley, eventually winning by 74 points. And Simon, you are on the board. Crisis point, it must be very fast approaching. Or are they happy? Um, happy? Oh, yeah, it's happy. difficult to be happy, Max, I suppose. <laughs> but look, Melbourne did toy with us yesterday. They, they, they played a great brand of football. They, have, they were coming off a few losses in a row. They've got a difficult three weeks ahead of them. But they really played committed football yesterday. Um, it didn't help St Kilda yesterday. Frawley, Frawley out the selected side. Um, also Lockett and Lowe not there as well. So uh, I suppose our goal to goal line was weakened, but really Melbourne with their committed play yesterday were excellent. And I just firstly was it, also was, want was to apologise. Hang on a second. Yeah, I want to apologise. This is a footage we got from another network. Fair dinkum. Channel we're not X. sure who's playing, but it was a bloke who's studying law at Monash and he was up on the top floor and he whacked a video camera out. Um, but that's oh, that's about the bad. best we can get. David Swartz, he was admitted to hospital last night with leather poisoning. That's how many times he got it. <laughs> Uh, he played an absolutely sensational game. He was dominant on the half forward line. Gary Lyon was dominant. Um, Jamie Shanahan did a sensational job on Alan Jakovic, which was a bit of a highlight for St Kilda. But we really just didn't have any match winners yesterday. The guys had a dip, they had a go. Nicky Winmar played a very, very good mm, game. Going well. um, How many that did was Jackovic one of get? our four games. He only got three in the end. And Shanahan. For the amount of pressure he was put under all day on Jakovic, such a quality forward, did a magnificent job. Who played on Schwartz? Sorry. Who played on Schwartz? Mate, a number of people. Strooper, there was, look, Fairling was a raffle. Uh, Lyon and um, Dean Anderson played on Lyon most of the day, but uh, Schwartz, he fared him out a day out. I, I didn't yeah, think Anderson it was that good. Anderson played on the back line. Yeah. yeah, they're yeah Simon, now, seriously, they've got, you've, um, you're lacking leadership on the field, a lot of injuries, right? Um, the coach needs as much help as he can get. You've played high-level sport. Do you think it's time you took on a hands-on role with the club, out on the field me, with the players? Me a hands-on? Yeah, I think you should, you've, pl you've played footy, you've played high-level football. Do you think you should be out there with hands training on, with the coach? Hands-on football. On the football, I mean. Yeah. Not oh, like, all right. Not, a, all right. not what you normally <clears throat> do. you think, do. I mean, seriously... You... No, look, I, I'd, I'd love to. Um, and I, I, I do. I will. And Melbourne I'll... Ruckman Jim Steins has found out. Steins, who's organising a gala Irish ball next month to raise money for the Open Family Foundation, last night witnessed firsthand the plight of kids as young as 12. It was like, gee, these kids really do need help. Like, they need a direction. And the sad thing is, all they really need is a bit of love and communication, someone that they can understand where they're at. Ironically, Steins' next appointment was at the prestigious Campbell Grammar School. 
The circumstances completely different, but Steins was still spreading the same message of hope. All kids are just looking for attention. It's like everybody. We, we, we search for significance all the time. We like to feel important. Coming into a school like this, they're all ready. They're all eager for information. They want to learn. Whereas the kids on the street, it's so like, some of the most you know, don't touch me. You know, I don't need anyone's help. I can do it my way. I'll do it. I've always done it on my own. Eddie Maguire, the glamour side only a month ago, beaten by 44 points at the MCG by the West Coast Eagles last weekend. And what was a really bad loss for the Demons, Djakovic in a bit of trouble there too. Let's see if he's in the side because there are two changes. Jacko remains in that side, so he should. Dyson it comes into the side. Glenn Lovett comes in, going out, both omitted. Two of the veterans of the side, Peter Road and Graham Yates. Samuel. Yes, well, they are in a bit of trouble in Melbourne. They uh, succumbed fairly meekly, I thought, actually, to the West Coast. Now, Alan, if you're listening, Alan Jakovic, fire up, son, for God's sake. I mean, do something, or maybe we won't be reading your name out uh, next week. And, of course, no better person to fire up on than, uh, in fact, uh, you, perhaps, Sos. Yeah, that's right, Sam. But what um, do you reckon? You belt him early or what? <laughs> oh, I won't be doing that. <laughs> won't you? one back. Is, uh, what's he like to play on, uh, Alan? Well, he's a, he's a dangerous player. Is he? I think uh, if he gets a couple of touches early, you know, he can get his confidence up. So, you just want him to get a couple of touches yeah. for the game at this now, stage. Would you, would, you prefer to, would you prefer to play on someone like him that moves around a bit or someone that uh, likes to stand there and, 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 and mark and, and uh, have a show of strength? Win them both lost five out of the last six games. Adelaide last week absolutely belted by North Melbourne to the tune of 80 points. Let's see how the Crows are going. There's uh, no, uh, there's no new name there as far as Corns as well after their great start to the season. They were beaten by 27 points by Carlton last week. Into the side, Graham Yates. Yeah, good to see Yater back too. Pike, Lamprell, Grinter and Peter Rhodes. So a bit of experience coming back there for the Melbourne side. Going out both injured Malloy and Dyson. And, of course, there's going to be a mastermind playoff between Alan Djakovic and Tony Modder at the completion of the game, just to see who goes on to the semi-finals in Switzerland. <laughs> and uh, uh, Melbourne, look, this is desperate straits. Desperate times for Melbourne. They need a win. I don't know... You know this ground as well as Graham Corns. Yeah, we often talk about home ground advantages, and there really shouldn't ever be the home ground advantage. Now, our blokes won here a couple of years ago, yeah. so they won't be uh, that unfamiliar with it. And also, just what Sandy said then, have you seen that what is not happening now, you know, with the Melbourne team that was happening, say, five weeks ago? Yeah, it's, it's a hard one. I, I, think, I think most footy today relies on control of the ball around the packs, and I think our on-ballers did a terrific job in the first part of the season. And the other sides have probably picked up on that. We've lost to you know, Andrew Ops, for example, and a couple of other players, which has just taken the edge off, and then you lose momentum, and, uh, and it's pretty hard to get it back. But I think that's the difference, just having control of the ball. And I think that'll be the difference today. Whichever side gets on top there will... I think no doubt win the game. Sandy. Yes, thank you, Neil. Uh, I've got Jared Healy with me. Jared, you've got a question uh, for Barmy? Yeah, just regarding Jimmy Steins. I guess uh, hindsight's a wonderful thing, uh, Neil, but he didn't look quite right last week. But uh, how is he coming up for this week? Oh, he's a freak, uh, Jared. He, I didn't think he'd get up this week at all. Um, and then he, he, just, he just got better and better as the week went along. And we tested him pretty seriously this week, which we, we chose not to do last week. Um, you know, trusting him because he's, um, you know, he's got up a few times against all the odds and we thought he's the sort of bloke who deserves to be trusted. Again, in hindsight, we probably would have been better off not playing him, but this week he's really come up and he knows the position he's in and uh, he reckons he'll be 100%. And a couple of uh, Adelaide players you've probably spent a little bit of time uh, thinking about this week, Tony Modra and Tony McGuinness, who were their likely opponents? Well, I haven't thought that much about Modric because I reckon that'll be a result of what happens everywhere else. But Sean White will certainly pick him up and he's got the athleticism to do a good job as long as we stem the flow. And McGuinness is a bloke who uh, I reckon he'd give it away if no one picked him up. He'd reckon he wasn't playing. So <laughs> we'll just pick him up just for the sake of it, I reckon. <laughs> well, you've got to say, last week, Dennis Committee here at the MCG, some heartening signs for Melbourne last week. Well, we're... You know, it's always hard to say. When you lose the game, we were very disappointed at the end of the game, Dennis. But uh, in retrospect, looking at it again, I thought we played pretty reasonable footy, had uh, more than our fair share of it. And if we had finished a little bit better, particularly in the third quarter, things may have been different. All having said that, though, in the last quarter, when it, the game was there to be won and lost, we couldn't quite do enough. So you can't take anything away from Carlton. But overall, I thought we were better than we had been. Neil, Neil. Just, uh, sorry, just jumping in there. Uh, Djakovic has been such a focal point for you over the last couple of years up forward. He hasn't been playing well and kicking the goals that he should have been. Have you had on one-on-one -on -one with him over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, a fair bit of that. I, I think his head's pretty much in the right place. He's, um, you know, his attitude towards what he has to do is pretty good at the moment. Um, 
He seems to have just lacked a little bit of, uh, you know, the spark that he's had. And we've done a, you know, we've spoken about that a fair bit. I think, in a way, he's such an instinctive player that I think maybe we're giving him too many instructions. You've got to think about doing this and thinking about doing that and handballing to this bloke and doing all these things. And maybe you've just got to say, Reflex. well, just yeah, get yourself right, yeah. go out there and play. And that tends to suit the position on the ground he plays. If you're a full forward, well, you know, I mean, it's pretty obvious what you're going to have to do because you're pretty close to goal, and that's uh, we're hoping that's what he'll do today. To the two Neils in Adelaide, uh, we thank you for your time. And to Neil Baum, good luck this afternoon. Neil should be a beauty. Hey, hey. And Jarman, and also erratic, but at times brilliant trio, Stuart Lowe, Alan Jakovic, and Bill Brownless. Fitzroy's Matt... Southern has already uh, <laughs> pencilled her in just for later on in life. <laughs> Uh, but now, look, the uh, Adelaide side... You'd be lining over. up there too. <laughs> What's that, mate? You'd be lining up there too, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that'll be a big game, this one, too, at the MCG. Melbourne coming off a five-point loss to the Adelaide Crows last week. It was a pretty tough game out there. We'll talk to Jacko about that last kick in a few moments' time, or close to the last kick. Anyway, a couple of changes with Rodney Grinter coming back into the side. Lovell and Lamperell also in for the Demons. Going out, Doyle, who's injured, so too Lovett and Sean White missing from full back there. So some good players out of the side there for Melbourne. Alan, uh, it was a great performance to uh, get within five points. Yeah, we, we all talk about the, the last kick. We've been mucking around with you. Well, what goes through your mind when you're lining up for goal? You must have known it was probably one of the last kicks of the night. Yeah, um, it's, it's hard to sort of recall what goes through your mind other than, you know, um, look for a better option or uh, kick the goal. Um, it's pretty hard from that, that angle, but I mean, you know, you either kick the ball or you don't. You, you well, know. you kicked three goals earlier, so you're finding a bit of form there uh, against the Crows? Yeah, I thought I was hitting onto the ball quite well and uh, sort of presenting myself, if you like, but uh, that, that last kick was a little, yeah. bit, little bit tough. And the Crows, they, know they played uh, reasonable football. They had a lot more scoring shots than you, Alan, so we should give them some sort of uh, begrudging sort of... Uh... Yeah, well, a couple of times I think we started from behind, you know, and uh, they, they should have been, realistically, at least six goals up at half-time. And uh, it would have been a steal, had we... And how did the madding crowd treat you over there? Yeah, well, it, you know, it's good to see. Really, it is. You is know, it? That, that's what Adelaide need. It is their home ground, and... Uh, you know, if anything, you can reverse that and uh, make it work in your favour. I mean, if I had to kick that goal, uh, you would have stuck been, it up. Would have been nice waving to them as you walk yeah. off the Tim. ground. You, Alan, would have, you would have waved to them too, wouldn't you? It would have been the old. No, <laughs> no, not anymore. No, no, no it's not. No, That's with with, with the new thing. hairstyle, I suppose. Is that the new look, the new, new image? How do you rate the uh, the crows? The hairstyle. Yeah. The, the hairstyle hair is very good. Isn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> <laughs> not as good as the crows, but. Sorry, Paul. How do you rate the Crows? Uh, they've been struggling a little bit. Yeah, um... well, we spoke about it earlier on before the show, and uh, <laughs> we said that if we uh, had it got up and beaten them by a point, it probably would have just... No, <laughs> if the boss says you've got to start on the bench, well, you know, you can't win. You've just got to uh, be positive about it, and when you come on, make sure that you, you know, and pull Alan, your finger uh, out. Six from seven, the, the Demons have lost. Uh, panic stations down there at the moment? No, no panic stations at all. I mean, the, <laughs> we've... So uh, we've, we've, we've <laughs> no, well, there's nothing to panic about. I mean, we know what we're capable of, and, uh, you know... Any chance we that. could show it shortly before we drop out of... Cal <laughs> before we drop out of calculations. Well, you, you were going to say that, you cockroach. You are a cockroach, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> so, something wrong with the ruck coaching down there at Melbourne at the moment, I think. Anyway, let's have a look at the, the Richmond lineup and... Well, at the Tigers on fire at the moment after cleaning up Collingwood and then beating North Melbourne last week by five points. A couple of changes to the Tigers <laughs> lineup. Coming back, Richardson, Matthew Richardson getting a reprieve after a couple of weeks in the twos. Gail back in, going out of the side, Miranda and Neil, both who have been omitted. Neil, who played well against Collingwood a couple of weeks before, kicking four or five goals there. But the no, Phil, this year, uh, Mick Dwyer. Susan. With the knee, obviously. About two to three weeks. Two to three weeks with the knee and Michael, of course. Back August. In, back in how, how, many, how much up or down? Up 20 bucks. Up 20, Russ? Uh, up 3.25. Up 3.25, Craig. Good, hey, I'm there, mate, conservatively. 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 We're, going, we're going to Europe. Good on you, mate. <laughs> Oh, good card. I think I'll have to go back to... Right, so to Bizotto, Payne and Dunstan, who uh, made such an impression early uh, last year. And going out of the team, Mitchell, Morton, Dent and Satori. Now, Satori, uh, Ruzi was going to be one of your big guns up forward. Uh, what's wrong with Pete? 
Well, he's been playing in the ruck and did a very good job. Five and have now lost six out of seven and we'll be talking to their ruck coach Sam Newman in a few moments time about that. Three changes to the Melbourne side. Coming in, White, Dyson and Cow. Going out, Gilbert who has got an injured back. Sullivan and Rod Grinter have been omitted. Now, Sam, they were all the rage down there. They, uh, they were pulling out the tweed jackets left, right and centre yeah. in the Melbourne members for a long, for the yeah. first five weeks and suddenly there's no one there in the members anymore. <laughs> yes, well some of the captains of industry uh, sat long and hard into a deep cold night, a bit of dry sherry and some crackers and they've decided that they can sort this out, uh, Eddie. They're going to make a full-blooded assault on the ball. Let's hope to God they are because uh, they might slip out backwards altogether if they don't do that because they've got the talent there. They're just not applying themselves to go in and get the agate now, at Neil, the minute. Neil Baum, Sam, said last week that I thought we were a good side but you can't be a good side if you're not beating anyone so obviously we're struggling. No, 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 he's a very astute coach, he is, Neil Baum. And uh, they are getting a lot of the ball. In fact, they're far more possessions than the opposition week in, week out. Is that part of their problem, do you think, Sam? Except for last yes, week. Yes, the more you handle it, the greater chance you have of losing it. it. Except for last week, Sam, sorry to contradict, but they had 55 less possessions than Richmond last week, but uh, I suppose that was just one out of the box, wasn't it, mate? <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been waiting, sorry. <laughs> now, what about the forward line? Now, guys like uh, Gary Lyon, a champion player, didn't have a possession after half-time. Djakovic kicked one goal. Schwartz had three possessions after half-time and only kicked one goal. Well, I guess the young fella Callaway is at a terrific season playing on Gary Lyon and keeping without a possession mm -hmm. in a half a game of football is just an unbelievable effort. It is. All and right. I wanted just to mention Alan Jakovic, what a lovely footballer he is. Isn't he playing beautiful football? Great personality. Great personality. Great personality. Tremendous yeah, personality. Lovely boy. The He's a lovely boy, Alan. life of any particular party you like to go to. Alan, are you there? How are you going down there, old son? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Uh, <laughs> a lot of mail about you. You're doing all right. You're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> What are you saying there, Alan? I said you're a great player and you're a great man to boot. Stop sucking up to me now, mate. You know I'm looking for you, don't you? <laughs> All right, well, there you go. There is the bloke who Melbourne are pinning their dreams to, Alan Jakovic. <laughs> last week. I did not. Well, someone did. As usual. The manner in which he treated Alan Jakovic last Thursday night on the footy show was disgraceful. I applauded him when he retaliated. I really admire, now listen to this, I really admire Alan's football skills, great personality, and good looks and wish you would leave him alone. And Wally skin courage through the pack, and the umpire doesn't move. There it is, another goal to the Demons. And finally, Melbourne reacquainted itself with the winning feeling at the Western Oval against Fitzroy. After the Lions squandered the breeze in the opening term, Melbourne used it wisely, adding seven to grab the half-time lead, which delighted the Demon supporters, but obviously not so Doc Wielden, who had plenty to say to Alan Jakovic as they went to the rooms at half-time. Both sides added two goals in the third quarter, which set Melbourne up for a big finish with the win, and that's exactly what the Demons achieved. Again, kicking seven goals with the win to cruise home 46-point winners, frustrating the long-suffering Lions fans, some of whom might have alternative accommodation tonight. Final scores, Melbourne 16-15, 1-11. Fitzroy, nine a good early season form behind the Met yesterday out at the Western Oval with Melbourne claiming a badly needing victory there. Victory, I suppose, uh, was a beauty for Barmy and the boys. Fitzroy, well, they found the Demons forward line just hard to contain. Jakovic booting five goals. David Schwartz finally regaining some form. And uh, Mal, just a case of Melbourne using the breeze better. Well, they had some 90 possessions more than uh, Fitzroy and uh, I think the exciting part of the game was Wilden and Jakovic in the uh, mid-half time and also the cans being squirted on Jacko. I believe he's trying to drink it too, Jakovic, <laughs> but he was red hot, he kicked five. I thought it was a pretty good performance by Melbourne because if you have a look here, Tingay, of course, been a pretty valuable player, kicking a few goals each week, runs in and kicks a good goal. But uh, they kicked 16, 15, 31 shots, of course, to 9, 11, which is 20 shots, and had won by some 36 points. This is a terrific goal by young Charles. That bounced just, through. In these highlights, they, re they seem really keyed up, Melbourne. There's a lot of back slapping and really getting into each other. Well, what's, what's this for a goal? Look at the good handballer, Jacko, there. He really shoveled the ball out. <laughs> a magnificent kick, that one. I mean, he's just a freak, isn't he? It but here he is again. They look really keyed up. Well, they had to be. Barmy, you know, is excited himself, and... Uh, basically said that they never thought a win was going to happen. They've played good footy, but have a look at this. This is the exciting part, the gloves versus Jacko, and he's puffing his chest out here. It looks like a bantam rooster, and Oops, someone comes in and helps him. Yeah. <laughs> but here he goes, here he goes again. And it, watch young Hawking here run in, and he missed it. He'll kill himself for this. Oh. Oh. Gee, and have a look at this one here by the great, marvellous Channel 9 Jakovic. Have a look here. Magnificent Didn't goal, Didn't look for the handball there either. Yeah. 
and have a look. They're all giving yeah, him a bit chance. of. They're washing him down a little bit there. But they <laughs> had good players in Lovett and Viney, Charles, Jackovic, <clears throat> Tingo, of course, and Young Malloy uh, played pretty well for Fitzroy. But they were disappointing again good in game, the second Mel. half. Good game. Uh, a good game from Melbourne's point of view. Do you think they turn the corner? Do you think they can string some wins together? Yeah, I do. You've got Geelong yeah, next week. Yeah, once you get Jakovic back a little bit hot and uh, once win. Ted gets rid of Malcolm Blight, oh, I'm sure. Oh, Jesus. Oh. You're an arsehole. Oh! Oh! Hey, listen, Max. Hang on, Max. Next week. OK. Of course, there wasn't much of a show for 8,500 people out of Western Oval yesterday. Fitzroy in Melbourne. No one turned up and Melbourne decided to bury Fitzroy. Bob Davis was there for our Channel 7 people. Yes, well, I don't think that Fitzroy have uh, quite come to terms with the Western Oval yet. They don't appear to be able to use the wind as well. In fact, in the second quarter, they, when they were playing against the wind, this is young Malloy, who is probably being a little bit overmatched at the moment, and that's one of the kicks that I was talking about. See, way offline, and uh, we see the enigmatic Mr Jakovic here. Here he goes, look. Um, trying his hardest, but spins one back and gets them a goal. I mean, in the first quarter... Melbourne held, uh, oh, this is at half time. Jacko's having a look. You want up oh, there? The doctor said, Hey, don't say that. Who did he find to talk to? Well, no, and uh, oh, I think that's Pike. Is that Pike? That looks like it. Could have been an ugly incident there, but anyway, it's nothing. Sean White went down very early in the game. <laughs> there's another fella. Look, now he's a very nice player, Simon Hook, going in. But a miss from that far. Now, why would he do that, Bernie? Because he didn't drive it hard along the ground, Bob. Oh, he didn't he should drive have. it hard right. along the ground, I see. Well, here's another one going in. And this fellow is a most exciting player, Sean Charles. There's no two ways about it. And he managed to put a couple through and Jakovic. And the game was over virtually at three-quarter time. Because the aggressive tackling of Fitzroy and their adrenaline held them for half time. But then their obvious lack of talent was just overtaken. The votes. Ah, I did get votes for the Shawns. Sean Charles, Sean White and Graham Yates. Where'd they come from? It's a shame. Anyway, the Heather votes. Bob, only 8,000 8, people out there. That must be very disappointing for the AFL and for Fitzroy Melbourne. Well, there was more in the President's one. But a method of playing, and again yesterday, it involved handling the ball a lot. Obviously, they handled it better yesterday. They, did, they, they were more precise in their positioning of the ball to further up the ground yesterday, which was much better for them. And they used the win a bit more intelligently than Fitzroy. Jakovic, uh, turned around yesterday. Oh, he's a marvel, Jakovic, isn't he? I mean, he has unlimited talent. There's no two ways about it. But unfortunately, someone must click his brain. I'm not too sure they wind him up or what <laughs> happens to it. But his brain has obviously been a bit... Uh... <laughs> what do you mean by uh, unlimited talent? Well, he has got unlimited talent. He can do anything, Jakovic. He is. I mean, he can kick left or right foot, mark beautifully, annoy everybody, annoy the upper, annoy the coach. I think he's a football match, and we've been friends ever since. Now, are you a, a serious uh, follower of Australian football? No. You're not. No, no, Why not? Because I like the game. But I just don't follow it. I leave. I, I pick a team the last quarter of the grand final. Yeah. <laughs> and my team always seems to win. <laughs> I always seem to win every year. That's what, what I say to those people. Sorry, Jim. The soccer team. Ireland for yeah, definite. That is the team. Definite. They're going to win the World Quarter Cup. Finals, you think they? We're through. We're playing. That's my Dutch. pick. That's my pick. And you got to win the World Cup. Go. Do you think here really? We don't go, don't here, don't here we go. go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Pinch the Adelaide Crows song, did they? No, no. Which only, only song we know other than Bright Eyed Girl? Here we go and Bright Eyed Girl. <laughs> uh, you want to hear it? Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We'll do Bright Eyed Girl again. Well, uh, hang on, before we do it, next Saturday night? Yeah. Just to let everyone know about the ball. Yep, where is it at? It's at the World Congress Centre. And uh, who's accompanying Jimmy Steins? Uh, me. Uh, no, he will definitely not get a break. Is it going to be a bit no, of a actually, surprise? Jamal's, Jamal's doing MC. Is he? So it should be a good night. We've got... Uh, How can people get a seat? They ring 696-3158 and they speak to a lovely girl by the name of Karina. Fantastic. So on, the, on the screen right now. Well, there you go, there you take go. it away, boys, on I'm Rex Hunt and you're not. Run that girl again, wait on me. to 
sing sha la 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 the big bar has melted at the pace you've been playing that piano at, mate. But uh, a great thank you to the two Irish boys, and you've got a couple of Swatch watches oh, for them. There you go, boys. Oh, so, so, you Take so your pick. Hold the red one. Are you oh. excellent? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll have the brown one. Yes, Rex. Like, for the fellas, we've, we've got the wonderful range of Swatch. Swiss made, water resistant and shock resistant, and always changing, a bit like the... Um, the pitch in that particular song. I didn't know Guinness can affect you that much. Maybe I'll take the faster one, because I got the red one. Stick the yeah, stick to football, Craig. OK, we're going to take a break on Umbre Sutton. You're not. Come back, introduce our audience, and great to see Robert Allenby is a three-shot leader going into the final day of the Irish Open, and he leads, of course, Nick Faldo. And come on, Robert, we're really backing you up there to get another title. The boy's on his way back, so are we. Look at the Geelong-Melbourne game right off the top. A great game down at Cadinia Park, Geelong. Well, they're in all sorts of trouble at the moment down there. The, uh, the captain, Mark Bairstow, and the general manager, Greg Durham, came out yesterday and said there was no trouble with the coach, uh, Malcolm Blight. So let's hope the boys can put it together for Malcolm because last week they were beaten by 36 points. They've made one change to that side. One change, and that was uh, Gary Hocking going out with an injured back and coming in brown. Now, Sam, your old side, uh, there was some talk during the week that uh, Malcolm Blight for Leeds along by 63 points with Jakovic kicking eight. Unfortunately for the Demons, there'll be no Jakovic in the side this week because uh, the old Jacko's out with a back injury. Cal has a shoulder injury. lamprell has been omitted. Coming into the side, Gilbert, Lovett and Hilton. The Demons last week broke their sequence of six losses from seven games and Melbourne had uh, defeated Fitzroy by 46 points with Jakovic kicking five. So Jacko's going to be a, a sad loss from that side. What's wrong with him? He's got a back injury. A back injury? Good heavens above. He just gets in and plays well and he's out. And of course, Jim Steins, he's broken his ankle apparently. He's on crutches, but he'll be playing because there's <laughs> nothing. There is nothing that can keep Jim Steins out, Jason. He's an absolute dynamo. He'll be playing on a lightweight walking frame, we're told, in the forward <laughs> pocket. <laughs> we, we, we can't get him out. He's They've tried to do everything to he's him. Marvelous. He says uh, great recuperation powers, doesn't he? You're not like you and you fracture your skull. You miss eight weeks. He goes on, broken legs, broken limbs, anything. What about Jacko? A sore back. Uh, sore you were saying back. off screen he's that he's got, a bit soft. He's got the pain. Oh, the what was that? You're not going to say it now on camera. He's got the pain tolerance of a heavy sneeze, Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> Seven out of the last nine games they've lost. The only two wins they've had have been against Fitzroy and St Kilda. Last week they were very competitive against Geelong until the last 15 minutes and then they were steamrolled to the tune of 30 points. Three changes in this side, Yates, Jakovic and Cowell. Jakovic out, of course, the last time they played, uh, Jacko kicked four goals. But uh, Melbourne and Melbourne defeated Hawthorne by 54 points on that occasion, going out Gilbert, Grinter and Road. Now, Sam, you're down there. Yes. I believe uh, last night the, play the players met with uh, the club officials for three hours. A bit of soul-searching going on down there. Can the Demons reverse uh, this trend at the moment? They'd be lucky to. Against Hawthorne, they'd be very lucky to. And, of course, uh, someone down there playing in the ruck, Jim Steins, he had open-heart surgery during the week, but he's still playing. <laughs> There's nothing that can stop him. He's actually got no limbs of his own at the minute. They're all artificial, all borrowed, but he's still actually playing for the side, so he'll be playing in the rack, and they'll be right up against it to beat Sam, the informed Sam, side of the season Sam, so Rod, far. Rod Grinter? Pardon? Rod Grinter is out of the side. Yes, that's right. He didn't right, get a run last week. There's this, I think he's a very good player, Rod Grinter, and uh, I think he should be in the Melbourne side. Well, I'll pass that on to Neil, though. <laughs> yeah, he'll be happy to know that, uh, Dave, but I mean, because you know, you're didn't get a run screen. last week, so... No, well, if you don't get a run, uh, yeah, he actually well, he made a special run comment about booted? that bomb. He said the side was going very well until the last 10 minutes. He says a bit late to make a change then. Let's go to the Hawthorne side now. He didn't say And the that. Hawks going along just nicely at the moment, as Sam Newman said. They've made two changes to the side coming in. Is Cooper and Crow going at Madigan, who's got an injured groin, and Baxter, who has been omitted. The Hawks defeated St Kilda by 44 points. Dunstall kicked five. Allen kicked four. Nine goal kickers in the Hawthorne. For Hawthorne has been soured, with full forward Alan Jakovic reported for abusive language. In direct contrast to their recent form, the Demons were superb while the Hawks showed none of their normal fight. Jakovic kicked eight. Charles Slade reports. The return of Jakovic immediately boosted Melbourne's firepower as he inadvertently set up Pike for the Demons' first goal. Despite their run of eight losses in ten games, Melbourne has decided to stick with Neil Baum's possession game and they took a two-goal quarter-time lead. 
The Hawks resorted to desperate measures in the second term as Melbourne broke away. Djakovic had three goals by half-time and Lyon ran in to make an inspirational captain's contribution. The Demons by four goals at the long break. Alex McDonnell provided the Hawks' only highlight. Djakovic blew the game wide open in the early moments of the third term, booting three goals in five minutes. The Demons added two more soon after to lead by 58 points. Dunstall's first goal didn't come until time on, when he added two in as many minutes. Djakovic crowned a great day for the Demons as they revived their finals hopes. Charles Slade, National 9 News. To the I think I should be on the news because I have a political statement to make. Yesterday, the Premier and the Treasurer of Victoria were sitting in the front row and there was enormous dissension between the two of them. Kennett, of course, barracks for Hawthorne and Stockdale barracks for Melbourne. And they are upset at the umpiring decisions, they are upset at the goal, they are upset at their <laughs> own players. But the worst thing that happened, at 3.40 precisely, 10 minutes into the third quarter, Geoffrey Kennett handed over money to Mr Stockdale. I think it was the bet. He gave up <laughs> very quickly. And so we'll just have a look at the head checker there. But it was a good game. Melbourne, like some of those unscrupulous medicos, were over-servicing themselves quite early in the game. And Djakovic gave notice that Earl, there's Gowers there taking a very nice mark. He was one of the few fellows that did try hard. Here's the master Djakovic on the wrong side, wrong footed and everything, Peter. That's a beautiful goal, isn't it? Very nice goal. And that he gave notice he was said, going to play well. You said that's a skill that hasn't improved. It in hasn't the game. improved. It hasn't improved. Some certain ones do. Now this is exactly. I've been unfortunate to watch Hawthorne in their very bad days over the last two or three. Years. Look, no pressure on Lyon whatsoever. Going in to kick a goal there and made it very easy and of course that was what the game was like. I thought that Hawthorne played extremely poorly for most of the day but we see a nice mark here by young McDonald gets up, he's at least trying there but uh, just after three, you know, after half time early in the third quarter when Geoffrey Kennett handed over his run, this is Djakovic kicked three goals in about three minutes and destroyed the game. Early in the last quarter there was a slight flurry uh, from Hawthorne but it disappeared very quickly and the votes I was really going to give the Phoebe twins a vote but I couldn't really discover where the mole on one of their cheeks was so I've left them out <laughs> but I did give one vote to Gary Lyon who got them going beautifully early Dyson who got back to his early form and is a magnificent kick and got them going and Djakovic who is probably well he's a very talented player but once again he showed uh, He's essential to their side, but undisciplined a little bit, I'm afraid. Bobby Didn't Elf. hinge on spearhead Alan Jakovic. More evidence of that yesterday. Returning after injury, Jack averted eight goals as the Ds ran all over a flat-looking Hawthorne side. But Mal Jakovic also found his way into the umpire's notebook. Well, it was unbelievable, uh, Max. Uh, he got for abuse of language. Just less sent. than what Witten and uh, <clears throat> Newman have said on this program over the last few weeks. He's called them a few things, starting with D, I think. But uh, Djakovic is up. There was four reports, in fact. And if Delicate. you have a look at the list, there was uh, Neats for striking, Hargraves, I think, for misconduct, Gowers for tripping. Andy and Gowers is the, one of the nicest blokes I've ever met in my life. He goes to church every Sunday, says his prayers. I mean, how could you rub out a bloke like that? Oh, well, hang on. Hang so on. That's got nothing to do with That's a character church. reference. Yeah. Not yeah. necessarily yeah. at this stage. I mean, I mean you, you just can't put out blokes like He's too to nice. To church mm. <laughs> he's too nice to be playing footy. Mm. Okay. Anyway, he's there. He's in a power of trouble. They look. I think it's a little bit... Uh, over the top abuse of language. I mean, the things oh, that we used joke, to be called and tripping, I think it's got over the top. Very, very boring. But anyway, this was a great game. In the gut, one thought that Melbourne could win, but on form, you thought that uh, uh, the Hawks would win it. And here's a very good goal by, I think, young Crawford. It was a very good snap here. And uh, you find a good passage of play here from Channel 9's prop. Uh, I think it's Pike that kicks <laughs> yeah, a good Pikey goal here. Props. <laughs> Pikey from props. He is Dermot, you can help me here seeing you're at the game yeah. with me. And here's Lovett from a handball that kicks a good goal with his balding the head, as you can see there, trying Phoebe to cop was a very, very good across the centre. Hammer. That's probably where they Watch Djakovic's goal here. Terrific goal here. Magnificent goal by uh, Djakovic. It's a shame he won't play for the next eight weeks. And three <laughs> bounces here by Lyon as he's running down the ground. And a very good player from Lyon, who's been a bit ordinary over the last few weeks. And his lift is no coincidence that Melbourne performed well. And look at this mark. There's a good mark by McDonald, I think, Yeah, wasn't young it? Alex. He ended up uh, spending a bit of the day on uh, Jacker, but he was just a bit too strong and uh, a bit of a 
Too okay. much football now for him in the final washer. A very good left footer there. There were 66 more possessions that uh, the Demons had. They carried the ball a lot, as we see. Pretty good effort. But uh, overall, the difference came in the centre line. Dermy, I think there was 107 yep. possessions to the Demons to about 55 to the Hawks and Gow. Simple. If you win the ball out of the centre, you're going to win the game. Yeah, and Gow, <coughs> he played in more positions than enough. A wing, centre-half back, centre-half forward, centre-half back. Catch. Don't <coughs> talk over, because we're not allowed to. And don't right. point, you guys. What do you want, I'm not pointing. Come on, oh, as, as the ask, champion what I want to ask. Oh, sorry. Dunstall. Were, yeah. were there excuses for him yesterday? None. White was terrific. He, whether he had the cold, pneumonia or what, it didn't make any difference. He was outplayed on a day, based basically because they got thrashed in midfield. Now the, now the point is talking about the midfield of Melbourne. Is that their strengths, or is Djakovic being back in the side? Because I, I saw them last week, and I didn't think the midfield used the ball well enough, regardless of who was well, down Melbourne the, were down very, the very, as you would recall, were very, very good at the start of the year. And those little guys, the Phoebe brothers and uh, Dyson and those types of players, they were very good. And then teams started to work them out, sit on them, sweat on them, and really stop their running game. Now that they've gone off the boil for a few weeks, those players are starting to get a free reign again. And yesterday it was just evident. They but, had their running abilities... Yeah, Welcome. When uh, Djakovic is up and about and he's got that tremendous enthusiasm, I mean, it does free up a couple of other people to play that fill in when he's uh, not there through injury or whatever. But he is uh, really an integral. He is really what makes the side click, isn't it? When well, he's, he's up unpredictable. And about. He does. He gives them. He gives mm. things to them that the normal player can't do. Whether it be a left foot snap, or mm. he should handball, but <coughs> knocks over two and barges through and soccer's a goal, or it bounces around corners. Djakovic is, a, I mean, a very gifted player. And without Djakovic, but midfield, if they don't get the ball and they muck around with it as much as they have, Melbourne, that's caused a lot of their problem. And they, they've got to get it down as quick as they can, because one out, Djakovic will beat 95 percent of his opponents. Now, now, the Phoebe brothers, the twins there from Tasmania, are in the side for Melbourne. I think they're in, uh, looking around there. And Demons have made a few changes with Djakovic going out after the bye last week. They defeated Hawthorne convincingly the week before with Djakovic kicking eight. However, his back hasn't come up and uh, there's four changes to that side. Road, Charles, Obst and Campbell coming back. Obst from a knee injury, it's kept him out for ten weeks. Charles has got a bit of a suspect back injury still. Neitz has been suspended for one. Pikes omitted, Djakovic with the back and Glenn Lovett with a groin injury. And good to see that uh, Gary Lyon has made it through there and is in the side. Well, a couple of surprises there uh, that Alan Djakovic is not playing and obviously Jim Stein's... Uh, now, Jim, isn't he battling against all odds? Jim actually died of cancer during the week. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, recovered uh, on the Wednesday and trained and he's back in the side, so... Uh, <laughs> Dangerous slipping out of contention, Sam. Yes, uh, but I wouldn't write the bombers off. Fell football. It now appears certain that in some shape or form, two clubs will join forces within the next 12 months. While Melbourne and Fitzroy were linked on the weekend, Hawthorne too seems interested in the subject, although the Hawks' president, Jeff Lord, has come under heavy fire for going public. It's water off the duck's back, really, because I've read... I mean, I've read everything. We're going everywhere and we're, we're merging, we're relocating. So I guess it's that time of year again, isn't it, really? Clubs are going to go down that path, so it'd be probably a little bit silly of Melbourne not to look at it if that's what they want to do. Mergers in the AFL do seem inevitable, but Fitzroy's future can never be predicted with certainty. Speculation about a new Melbourne Lions combination has gained considerable ground. Melbourne President Ian Ridley was asked if serious discussions have taken place. Well, with some things I guess you answer correctly and some things you're better off to shut up on. Fitzroy's Chief Executive John Burt denied the rumours outright, but the key player in any merger, Lions Chairman Dyson Hall Lacey, perhaps added to speculation by refusing to comment. With a second South Australian team in the wings, the AFL may agree to wipe any debts of the first two clubs to merge. That will particularly interest Melbourne, who it's understood to have lost a considerable amount of money this year. On field, a deal could also see six Fitzroy players, including skipper Paul Roos, join Melbourne. We've had a chat to Roosie there, we're having a bit of a laugh about it, but we could slot him in, I'm sure, and they have some good players as well, but I mean, it might be a little bit early to start thinking that way. I guess if you take the, the clubs out of it, if you take the names out of it, and you say, look, the first two teams to merge, whoever they're going to be, are going to be a very strong side. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Roos, who met with Fitzroy on Friday, says it's all just speculation at the moment. And one of the questions that just came up through the, the meeting was, you know, if we are signing with Fitzroy, are we, are we staying as Fitzroy? And we were assured... ...a merger, but sources confirmed the push for the Melbourne Lions was well underway.
With the merger talks leaking out over the weekend, fans of both clubs were quickly on the phone today to vent their anger, particularly here at Melbourne, where a number of members said they would burn their membership tickets. One even said he'd become a Collingwood fan. That feeling was backed by Melbourne club record holder Robert Flower. I think you'd feel as if it wasn't your club anymore, that uh, I was brought up as a Melbourne boy, uh, barrack for them, played for them and uh, support them now. And if it became another entity, then you wouldn't feel part of it. The news wasn't received well by Fitzroy captain Paul Roos. On Friday, Roos... ...and was playing up the ground. Uh, so he was responsible for two... ...the young full forward Cummings and gave him two gimmies. But now, I want to comment on this. Now, look, Gary Lyon, tremendous use of the body. There is no free kick in that. That is a man-on-man -man contest, and the ball was handed to Gary Lyon 10 metres out. That should never have been a free kick against young Manton. And not long after that, the same incident, terrific play by the captain here. Look at that. That is class personified, but no free kick. And, and we got the chance to see Gary Lyon use his great ground skills. Tremendous. And... Uh, Here's Andrew Obst who came back into the Melbourne side. He's a tough, hard player. Now, have a look at this for a goal to Andy Lovett coming around the members' wing. Has a bounce, and this is where they kicked some great goals at the MCG. As Andy Lovett, one of those terrific midfielders, banging it through for a good goal. And you can see David Swartz very, very happy. And mentioning David Swartz, well, the votes I gave... Well, I'll start from the bottom. Steve Phoebe, tremendous performance. About 35 possessions on a half-back flank. Gary Lyon took over at full forward, came up the ground on many occasions, just took over the game on the forward line with his class. David Swartz, enormous game at uh, centre-half forward. He took about 14 or 15 marks and contested absolutely every issue. Yeah, Peter, uh, Matthew Phoebe started on the wing on Rick Olerenshaw. Sheedy had Olerenshaw off in the first four minutes of the game. I think uh, he had kicked two goals he on had, yeah. uh, Olerenshaw he and had. then he dragged him. Was that I too could, quick? Do you think I, that's too quick? I think it is far too quick. And I, I thought that uh, some of those Essendon blokes didn't know whether they were coming or going. I couldn't keep up with the changes. They were on and off the ground. They were at full back and full forward. But As evidenced by the way they yesterday humbled the Bombers, despite being without Djakovic, Neitz and losing Matthew Phoebe during the course of the match. Melbourne fullback Sean White has joined us at the moment. And not so much activity down your end of the ground as you would have expected yesterday. Certainly thought it was going to be a really very competitive um, game right the way from the full back line to the full forward, but um, sort of one of the easier games that I had to play, so it was good. Talking about goals, to boot 21 goals, no Jacko up front, um, very, very pleasing. It was really good because everybody started to take the chances and I think we kicked something like you know nine points, which is uh, a great thing to do from any point of view. So all the boys were pretty happy because the goals were being taken. So everybody was really happy about getting the ball forward. So it was good. And Sam, your assessment of the match, are they back to the start of the year form, the Demons? Well, uh, it was a very good performance by uh, Melbourne yesterday, no doubt of that. But certainly it is a game of attrition as we speak because uh, while Melbourne had plenty out, I mean, uh, we made plenty of mention of Hawthorne's inadequacies when they didn't have Langford and uh, Dunstall at the start of the year, but of course they didn't have Heard at centre half forward and of course Fletcher at full back. So, uh, but they were hamstrung uh, from the opening bounce. We thought they had a very top heavy uh, forward line in Alessio Cullen. I thought they all played reasonably well considering how much action uh, Melbourne had. Uh, how much action Essendon had in, 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 at any stage of the game. But Matthew Phoebe there kicked three goals in the first quarter and perhaps set the win up for uh, Melbourne, then went off, I think, in the third quarter with a broken wrist or damaged wrist, anyhow. Well, I've overemphasized that bit, Shawnee. A damaged wrist, did he? Shoulder. A shoulder. Yeah, oh, well, something yeah, like I that. See, yeah. Now, there's uh, Gavin Wanganeen, who uh, was instrumental. Here's one of them, a hand pass to Scott Cummings, the new John Coleman, they reckon, who uh, kicked a quick goal there. And uh, there's the man of the moment, David Schwartz, just flying through the air like a gazelle. Some very strong some, marks. And some very ordinary umpiring decisions here uh, about uh, taking some marks. Alessio and he got two charity goals uh, through uh, free kicks that weren't there, but that's another story. Gary Lyon playing marvellous football down there on the half-forward line. Uh, there's Phoebe the doing the shoulder, is it then? Yes. Not the wrist. Landed and on the elbow and uh, hurts the AC joint in the Sean shoulder. Sean Charles has been uh, a, a very good player since he's come back from wherever he was earlier in the year and uh, I don't know where we lost track of him there at some stage didn't we uh, Sean but he's back now and playing very nice football but I felt a bit uh, sorry for Essendon not because we have anything uh, any extra grind or any great uh, compassion with them but uh, I still think they'll figure in the finals I uh, still think that when they get those guys back they're uh, 
capable enough of doing well, but it was a fantastic performance uh, by a very invigorated and uh, rejuvenated side who had a break during uh, the last fortnight. Yeah, the timing of the break was perfect for the Ds, wasn't it? Certainly a lot of things, um, a lot of the older players were really appreciative of it. Um, the older guys sort of gave them a little chance to sort of uh, just sit back, recover. Neil Baum gave us about four days off from training. So it was really good for all of us to just sit back, relax, take it all in and then become focused because a lot of people said it was disappointing because we played so well against Hawthorne and then we didn't have something to follow it up but all of us were thinking well it's fantastic it gives us two weeks to focus on this because we knew they were going to be highly competitive. If I could just say uh, one thing uh, Sim if you wanted to come in there just say one thing it was apparent absolutely apparent that the only uh, uh, rush or <coughs> run that Essendon made at Melbourne was when Melbourne lapsed into Sean that fiddling around with the ball that indirect play that possession football and as soon as you uh, shaped up not you but as soon as the side shaped up and kicked directly to the two key forwards you could just see the difference in the way the team played but possession football is something I would suggest Melbourne have to dispense with what's, what's that, the Sam, what do you mean Sam, hang on Sam's possession football you <coughs> want them actually to give the ball to the opposition I disagree, no, possession, possession I disagree yeah I agree with you totally because if you if you've you got to hang on to the, the ball that's the name of the game the opposition's got to chase it and no. if they're chasing you it's a hell of a lot harder rather than if you've got possession of the ball, you know what you're doing it. I mean, that's the difference. If you don't know what you're doing with it, then you fiddle around. If you know what you're doing it, which is the direct... If he's not Irish, I think Scotty. Hey, look, Sammy, cop that. No, hang on. Hey, Short no, Irish man. Oh, right back in Sorry. your box. Where's the bit where I have to disagree Gentlemen, uh, uh, can I just ask one? Can't let everybody ask me questions at the same time. Okay. Is it better to lose the ball in the middle of the park or, or you know, lose it uh, on your forward park. line? I mean, well, I mean, no, but the whole thing is if you're playing, <laughs> kicking a short game... Yep. Don't I mean, lose it, it at all. You certainly... Uh, I disagree with what... Yeah, well, so do I, the, 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 way, the way the game is, is that it, it's a real support system. And if you've got plenty of players around the ball, if you lose the ball around the middle of the field, there should be enough players there to put the pressure on the opposition. If you do that, then you're in a position to regain the ball and take it forward. Sure. If you lose possession, you've, you've got to get it back anyway. Yeah, one point. When did you last play football, Sean? Yesterday? Yeah. When did you last play football? Oh, that's got nothing but to listen, do. Listen, we've, oh. we've had a viewer ring up, but Sam. Yeah. Have a look at Sam's tie, because they reckon that's the wrong part part of your anatomy to have that sun shining. Sean, I was going to ask you this question now. Your, your forwards functioned very well yesterday. Uh, the captain kicked eight goals and no. uh, the other boy kicked five swords. Yep. Will Jakovic get a game next week? That's the, now from your point of view. Should he get a game or will he get a well, game? Well, I mean, against yeah. Hawthorne, he's kicked eight goals himself. Yeah, well, so how, do you, where, how do you get him I mean, on the side? But you see, it's like Man robbing himself. Peter to pay Paul. You, you, you take Jakovic out, that means you've got to take Lyon away from where he prefers to play yeah. on the half forward line and put him in full forward. Why not put Jakovic there, who's a, a, an enigmatic character at the best of times, oh, yes. and he's fantastic. He's great for the team so we'll get a game. to have in there. I know I certainly would think if he's fit, he'll get a game. Sean, um, Sheedy's talking about uh, playing seven teams coming off a bye, having a bit of a bitch about that. I mean, how do you feel about the bye? The advantages, disadvantages. Well, it's, it's funny, when it first came in, a lot of the players were, oh, God, you know, I mean, it, it, you lose your rhythm. But all of a sudden, now everybody's sort of saying it's fantastic because you get that opportunity to rest your weary bones. I mean, the season's long enough as it is, so you get that chance to have a bit of a rest. And, I mean, yeah, I mean, it probably is hard for Essendon because they're so short on the list to sort of then have to come up against teams that are rejuvenated, ready to go at them full bore. Okay. No, it's right. Sam, did no, you take a breath? Look, he's got all your blokes down, question. I would like to continue with the uh, indirect play, but I won't. I saw Sean kick the ball out, take a great mark on the full back line and kick it four times. The Melbourne side kicked it four times before they even got it out of the 50-metre arc. Well, we still had possession of the ball. Uh, but the long gear hold onto the ball and kick bigger it chance, and control it. The bigger disagree. chance of losing. Well, disagree. I've, I've well, seen you so play you're... lots of times. Yeah, but the thing is, if you, if you and, take uh, the ball and then you've got no open target up the field, why should you just balloon it up the Isn't ground? Isn't that the bottom line with all the open target anyway, up the field? Why kick you, it where you haven't got a chance of getting exactly. it? Why not keep Isn't position? Your I could agree with you. Sean Wacky, but the And the bottom line is, we must go to a break. Sean, you've been fantastic. You've stirred the pot beautifully. Get into him. Gavin next week. He gets the bear. Oh, you're de facto. I don't care. David Neitz is going first. Five shots with the left hand, then five with the right. Target. Here we go now. Sorry, Sam. Hey, move oh, that. Ten. Bullseye. Ten. Bullseye. Ten. Oh. Well, he didn't say move the target. Fifteen. Fifteen. Five. 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 Makes him start. twenty. We'll give him a free shot this time. Five again. Twenty-five. Five and that makes him third eye. Now you've got to give Ricky a five shot with the right hand. Move the target. 
I'm moving it, I'm moving it. Five makes him 35, eh? And Four. five, ten makes him 45, eh? Five. And five is fifth, eh? And five again. 55. And, and five again. And six, eh? Well done, David. Of course, you get the first prize from Sweeps, and you get second prize, which is the same amount of money. But don't worry about it. Sweeps a great product. <laughs> And don't forget, your, you'll get some of your row of garments too, I think. I must get back. Even though Melbourne gave him an ice old pasting in the early... There again, is he? No. ...for this match. Hopgood, Neitz, Pike, <coughs> Doyle and Malloy come into the team. No Jakovic who kicked six in the corresponding match. Last week, however, Gary Lyon was on fire. He kicked eight goals, Swartz kicked five. And they had 72 possessions more than the Essendon side. And when the Demons have got plenty of possessions, they are playing their best football team. Yes, they are. They were very good last week. I tell you what, I tell you who impressed me last week was David Swartz. Have you seen him this year? Yeah, he's, he's a terrific yeah. player, David Swartz. He must have caught the ball about 14 times, I Great think. Mark, Jimmy. He's a very Great, good great player. hands. And Gary Lyon, and also across the centre line. They'll miss Matthew Phoebe, though, because he was a very good player for him, very good runner, too. So I'm he's... absolutely staggered at this side here that Jim Steins is in because Jim Steins died last week and was cremated. Uh, <laughs> the, these are his remains in here. <laughs> so, uh, look. <laughs> That's Jim, Jim Steins is in here. You don't want to blow too hard or he might lose weight because he's obviously in the side. <laughs> that, this is the biggest comeback ever in the history of the world. That Because uh, I don't know how they're going to do <laughs> it, but he'll be back. Apparently they're trying to say he's, he's still 50-50. Well, he is. Yeah, he's 50. No, he's, he's not looking well at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> They'll snap him together and uh, up he'll go. Uh, <laughs> Trevor? Uh, yeah, week about the merger with Fitzroy and the Demons have been playing quite nicely too. So nicely in fact that they are unchanged from last week's team that beat the Brisbane Bears at the Gabba. And Sam, uh, last week Gary Lyon kicked five, Pike kicked four. But I'll go to you first Jacko, you're not there, how bad is your back? Yeah, it's, it's coming good uh, Eddie. Excuse me Sam, you're right there. No, it's coming, it's, yeah, it's coming good uh, Eddie. Um, it uh, should be should be there next week. I think that uh, that Hawthorne game, I uh, I just took about one week too many. So. And uh, what about uh, the boys up forward there? Gary Lyons oh, been going fantastic. Working exceptional, exceptionally well. Uh, uh, Jeeper, uh, he got injured last week. He got a little bit hurt, and uh, <laughs> when he came down, he just back into it. And David, David Schwartz uh, did as well. David Schwartz has been sensational the last uh, oh, four or five weeks in particular, hasn't he? Absolutely. He hurt his arm pretty bad last week. Did as he? Well, he got did kicked, well. kicked the well, now look. You couldn't believe this. <laughs> He's in again. Jim's in. Uh, we thought we'd buried him. He was in the urn last year, last week. Jimmy Steins. Jimmy Steins is in. Now, look, we're going to try and bring him back from the uh, dead because, God help us, Melbourne need him. Now, I want you to all link hands there. We're going to bring him back from the other side. Now, boys, please, link hands. Pretend... <laughs> Alan, please. Good God, man, you spilled the water. Link hands. Pretend you're in the showers at training. <laughs> Now, I want a bit of silence. We need to get the lights down because we're going to try and bring Jim back and put it to rest. Jim! Jim, are you there, son? Jim. Son, son. He's there. I can't believe it. Jim, son, for God's sake. Help me, son. Son, help me, son. Don't overact, Jim, please. Uh, Jim, please. You've gone across to the other side. Can you come back? Are you turning? Are you on the turn? Bring me back, Sammy. Come on Bring down. Me back. Let's have it. Let's chant for Jim. 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 Come on Jim. down, Jim. Jim. It's another program. Jim. Come on Jim. down. Jim. Jim. You're back, Jim. I'm back. Is this really you? How can we be sure? Are you a bionic man, Jim? We've had you down and out 83 times this year. No, you, ha you had me down and out. What's 83 wrong with times. You? Can you tell us what's wrong with you, Jim? Is the knee? Is that a, your no. knee or is that someone else's? Yes, no, that's the, the, the real leg. The real... The Test. real bird. And the real pump Don't, in there, mate. The pump's it, still going. That's is, the main yeah. thing. Alan, is he a hu Hello, Alan. Hello. Is he, <laughs> is he a human dynamo or what? He is, mate. But look at that band-aid on his finger there, mate. The what? The, the band-aid. Band-aid. Well, it's a, it's a bit Don't of tell me that's going to keep him out, is it? <laughs> Kept me out for four weeks. Hey? Kept me out for four that's, weeks. He's had a screw <laughs> in his knee, he's had one in his ankle, and don't go on with that, I know. <laughs> uh, I've got to tell you something, Sammy, though. All seriousness, the first time it was I had a leg Reconstruction. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. We can see some people playing. The next week, I got a leg amputated. 
After that, I had all these Melbourne supporters ringing up the club trying to find out what hospital I was in. <laughs> then the next week, I had cancer. And um, I had kids coming up to me saying, so when does your hair start falling out, Jim? Yeah. Thank you, Jim. And then last week, because I was in the urine, I had a read sent to, to, sent to the football club. And then after that, I had people ringing up my mother in Ireland going, so, um, sorry to hear about the news about your son. Jim, you're ringing up your mother. I mean, what? Did you say your mother? <laughs> hey, well, Mrs. Steins wouldn't be watching on the other side. She could be, uh, she, she's still with us, is she, Jim? Yes, she is. Well, God. look, this is frightening, Jim. You're back here and it's sensational. You'll be obviously playing against Collingwood, I suppose, and things are very, very buoyant down at the club. The cigars yes. have been broken out of the crates down there, the members. No, not, not, not just yet. No, we're... We've still got to get a little bit higher up the ladder, but we're doing quite well. He's a marvel, yeah, don't Trevor, you? Trevor. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering, Jim, when you were over the other side there, did you see Elvis and how spewing was he? <laughs> well... <laughs> so, Sam, uh, I have to say, though, Sam, uh, Sam's done a huge job, job to get in touch with you there, because uh, I was there at rehearsals and Sam got in touch with the spirit of progress. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's interesting for me, I didn't want to take part there because I'm a little bit superstitious about it because my grandfather was a clairvoyant, actually, my really? great-grandfather. Yeah. He actually uh, helped the authorities find a missing body once. Oh, yeah, where was it? Uh, in the boot of his car. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, look, it's a very, very strong side, Jim, and how confident can we get down there because we haven't made a change? Can we get down there? Well, I mean, it's just a, it's a right. throwaway. We, uh, look, Sammy is he, doing his best. He, he is your rock coach, hand. is he? Well, he, he thinks he is, and we like to... Keep it that way. And he is, no, no, he is doing a good job. All right, well, let's have a look at the team that will put you back to the other side this week, Jay Steins. The Mag Still an AFL investigation. They're in a remote area in near South Australia. And uh, I was with Tony Shaw, and he said that they're going to try and get Monkey to fire them up again, Jim. And you look like you'll be in the firing line because you actually play on him or play against him. Yeah, I, I actually... Are we ready? Yes, we're definitely ready. Um, you know, they've got a style of footy, we've got another style, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, the game starts. Trev, you... Well, it's, it's an interesting, interesting question. I mean, how long does it take to cite a bloke on trial by video? What are these out on Weekly Red, all these things? <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, it's not the uh, trial by video. There has been an investigation, so they, uh, they have been interviewing people like David Kelthorpe from the Essendon Football Club and uh, all sorts of people, so we'll find out tomorrow more about that. Boys, uh, just before we go, the two Melbourne lads, uh, what have you, how's the club reacted to all this merger talk this week? Firstly, you, Jim. Well, uh, I suppose from the players' point of view, we're trying to keep well out of it. And, you know, we had a chat with Ian, um, the president at the start of the week, and he just said, look, leave it up to us, you know. You guys get on with footy, you've got finals coming up, and you've got to put 100% into it. So basically that's what we're doing, because it changes so much from day to day. Now you've got the Bears getting involved and so on. And it's, uh, best to be that way. Well, should you ever come back and play, Alan? Uh, do you think there'd be any danger that you'd like to play with the Fitzroy side? Any one of them at all? No, no. Oh, well, you know, I wouldn't mind. I suppose when a player comes, he's brought into the club and he's a mate like any other player. But uh, you know, know, I just wouldn't mind getting a game. Just just well, I wouldn't mind just playing with you, man. I wouldn't mind just playing. What's yeah. wrong with you? Sure. I'm oh, injured. sorry, I'm, I'm not injured. told not to be aggressive, dude. What I'm is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah Jacko. Hang on, hang on. I want to ask that one. What is wrong with you, Jacko? <laughs> That's what everybody would Come on, Jimmy, I spoke to you about this tonight. <laughs> It's his tie around his neck there. He looks yeah. like Jaime out of, out of Get Smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'll loosen it up. Is that all right, Sammy? I'll loosen it up. You look... Yeah, loosen it up, mate. Make your own rules. All uh, right, let's, let's go to the break. It is a big game, though. Uh, Collingwood, fine. Melbourne versus Collingwood. Yeah. Both have had ten wins and eight losses for the season. <laughs> Whoever loses could well be out of finals. Uh, contention will be... As I said, Sam, lost by nine points. How they were going and what he was saying to his opponent last week. Quite interesting stuff too, apparently. A couple of changes for the Demons, or are they the Lions? No, they're still the Demons. Hopgood, Irving and Lovett. It's good to see Dean Irving, the former West Coast Eagles player, getting in for his first game. Of course, Dean works in the props department here at Channel 9, so no doubt he'll be nice and rested because he doesn't do any work here, we can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Charles is out with a virus. Gilbert's got a cork thigh. Doyle has been omitted. And they've got a few injury worries too down there at uh, Melbourne, of course. Well, of course. Jimmy Steins is oh. injured. <laughs> He's always injured. Gary Lyons got the flu. Phoebe's got a sore hip. Viney had a thigh injury during the week, so they've got a bit of problems down there. Yes, and they'll be fired up because it was a fairly ordinary performance against Collingwood, taking nothing away from Collingwood. Ned and you were frightening all the people there that you were uh, not playing on, Thanks, but Sam. playing around. But uh, you've got to remember, one of the things that uh, I think Barmy brought up after the game was the fact they, they played in Brisbane under some a bit of heat, and then they've had a shorter week again this week. So I think they're going to struggle to come up 
in the short time, especially with a few injuries. Yeah, terribly charitable of you, Ned. You're making well, excuses for No, me. I'm not making excuses for them. <laughs> well, they're three points down at three-quarter time and lost by 28. So did you feel that they were running out of legs? Well, certainly the last quarter, we our midfield got on top and uh, started to run the ball through the, our, our centre-half forward area. So it was... Uh, Oh, we saw a couple of teams on Friday night, North Melbourne and Melbourne. So much was promised by North Melbourne. They'd lost McKernan out of the ruck to Mr. Bissy, and Melbourne had other plans. And, Jared, it was a terrific performance. Well, look, it was a great game, uh, Rex, but I think this game was almost over before it started. Uh, Corey McKernan absent, Peter Mann and Anthony Rock pulled out before the game started. And I really thought that uh, that tipped the balance of power in Melbourne's favour. And I guess one other thing uh, came to light, the fact that Terry Wallace, Footscray's uh, seconds coach, was uh, believed to have said on Sky Channel on Friday, last Friday, that Melbourne are talented enough to beat any team in the competition, but are physically and mentally weak. Now, Melbourne, I believe, were told that before the game. They came out, they were pumped up, they were aggressive, and they really did play... A brand of football that I think make them about uh, third or fourth on the favourite favourite for the flag uh, run. They are playing excellent football. Now, there was a couple of big battles. Swartz we just saw on camera. He had a terrific battle with Mick Martin. I think Mick probably just took the honours, but uh, it was a classic uh, encounter. Andy Lovell you just saw kicking one of his five goals. He was, uh, he was something that North Melbourne didn't have. They couldn't find a goal kicker. Their two guns, Carey was uh, taken out of the game by Neitz. Now, there is a question mark on Carey's fitness, but uh, he was out in the ground. You can't take anything away from Neitz, who played a very defensive game. The fellow on screen, Gary Lyon, was always going to take a couple of marks on Ross Smith. Ross Smith started on Andy Lovell, but uh, was taken up the ground by him and uh, certainly uh, had a big impact, and Smith just couldn't come back with him. Sean White, you just saw some of his aggressive tackles. Here's the player I spoke about, Neitz. Uh, Sean White played probably his best game of football for Melbourne that I've seen for a long, long time, and he's enjoying perhaps his best season. The other good uh, battle was, uh, of course, Longmire and White, who we've just discussed, and John Longmire is sadly out of form at the present time, having kicked uh, very few goals in the past few weeks. Three votes to Sean White, great game. Tingay was one of the Melbourne midfielders that uh, really did work hard for the club and uh, when all their players are running and fit, they've got a magnificent... Uh, it was an absolute rip. Got up, had a great win yeah, for mine. Yeah, they had a ripper for mine. So North could just about slip out. Actually, I, I think it's worry time a little bit for uh, down North at North Melbourne in that you know, they've probably done the same thing last year as they seem to be doing this year. But a, a week's a long time in footy, the oh, old allergy. But you know, allergy. Melbourne have re covered very well with injuries. Allergy. Some of them, analogy, was it? Allergy. Oh, I had a bloody allergy. It's an analogy. <laughs> what about that goal? Yeah. It wasn't a goal. Wayne Kerry, he had an analogy and an allergy on Friday night. He had a bit of both. And that was uh, a goal. He order. had a bad night and uh, you know, really wasn't himself. He's definitely carrying it a shoulder him. injury. Sean White was sensational at fullback. He cut John Longmire right out of the game. Neats on Kerry was very, very good. The halfback line of Melbourne, the way they ran off and their direct football they played. Oh, hello. The direct football they played off their half-back line going across their centre line. There's Swartz who played a serviceable, serviceable game. Good work. Well, Good work, there. serviceable. Why am I doing this better than you? <laughs> <laughs> a lot better game than last week. He was probably questioned on a few things last week about uh, the way he went after the football and on Friday night he went after the football with a lot more fervour. But Sean White was, as I mentioned, was fantastic. But the way they ran the ball off the half-back line, Melbourne, and used guys like Obst, <coughs> Tingay, Dyson, Glenn Lovett gave them a lot of drive being back in the game. And I thought, fantastic effort from so Melbourne. And they'll go a little bit somewhere if they can hold this team. <laughs> Simon, I want to ask you a very... And, of course, Michael Gow for, um, from uh, Richmond. Uh, he's a... What is he, Sam? House model for Edward Beale. Edward Beale. A nice haircut. And let's give us a look at your hand. Harley Davidson. Oh, right. you've got to go up the blood reel. Up you go, son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> and also David Neitz. Uh, from, give us your hand, son. Melbourne. Now count your fingers. David Needs from uh, Melbourne. Melbourne. I know it's Melbourne. Five. Five. Five more makes it ten. Bullseye. And then nine for the moment. What a tussle. Five. Now it's twenty-five, eh? Twenty-five, eh? Shut up, Ken. Five. Now it's third eye. Third eye. Now give him a round of applause. Target. You only need twenty to win, so play kill, son. Really need the target. Five. Five. 35. Five. And five more makes him forte. Forte. Bullseye. Ten is fifth. I haven't got a practice on your mileage, right? Five. 
55. Full time! Oh, oh, sorry. Here we are. Oh, David, congratulations. You won the Rex Prize and all the other goodies that Max mentioned before. You both get prize money from Swepps and we say it's great yeah, stuff, Max. Luke. Great contest yeah. and it was... Dougie all... kicking the winning goal or the one that sealed the match. That defeated North Melbourne by 20 points. It looked like Melbourne was gone there for a while and they are back in town once again, hanging in in seventh place. They are 11 and 9 on the win-loss ratio, but in there by percentage. Phoebe and Charles in, Hopgood and Malloy go out of the side, both omitted. Lovell kicked five, Lyon three and Pike two. Tingay had 30 possessions last week, Sam. They do. I was down at Melbourne... Uh... He didn't even know what he's clapping at. You were talking to that bloke while you were clapping. Um, Club in Australia, so I guess yeah. we might as well throw Sydney in too. What about Sydney? Footscray with uh, Lyon kicking five and Pike two. Jakovic, of course, out for the rest of the season after having a back operation this week. And, uh, well, it's a, it's a massive game for them. It's a huge game. And look, do you think the uh, signs are there, Dougie? They've got Rodney Grinter just sitting well, on the bench because if things start to get out of hand, Ronnie will come. I've been asking over the last few weeks, come. where's Ronnie Grinter? And he played very well in the seconds. And it's good to see Ronnie Grinter in there because he had that bit of fire, a bit of toughness. Mongrel, I think, is the word. Well, Just stumbling here, CG. The Demons put their recent poor form against Sydney behind them and sealed the 46-point victory with a seven-goal third quarter. David Schwartz was best on ground and kicked nine goals. The Richmond side attended a fundraiser at Punt Road, but all eyes were on seven. They needed Sydney to beat Melbourne to stay in the finals race. But the Demons too were fighting for their finals life. Obst gave them a lightning start. Sydney was out to avoid the wooden spoon though, and two goals to Darren Creswell kept them in touch. Melbourne's accuracy was telling, and at the first change, they led by ten points. Martin Pike though snapped a beauty early in the second term. Sydney and Richmond were in trouble. But a quick silver hand pass from Minton Connell to kick it late in the term cut the margin to 14 points, and it was still wide open. Sensing they were in trouble, the Demons went up a gear and again drew away to a 24-point lead. David Schwartz quickly became the difference between the two teams. By the time he'd kicked his ninth, Melbourne's final spot was sealed. And with Gary Lyon marking everything up forward, the two-pronged attack proved quite formidable. Their defence lost one member, Sean White, stopping briefly for a neck massage. It mattered little. The Demons left the ground with a 46-point win and a place in the finals at the expense of Richmond. You know, the players just thought, you know, finals and, you know, we don't want to end it, you know, on a sour note today, so it was a great effort. Sandy Roberts, Seven Nightly News. And Melbourne. Melbourne lose, they're out of business. The Blues, of course, have the double chance this week. Well... Sam, they reckon last week they only played 20 minutes of football. Well, no, They've made four changes. Gilbert, Malloy, Lovett and Yates come into the side. Melbourne defeated Sydney last week by 46 points in a match they had to win with Schwartz kicking nine, Charles and Pike five each and Lyon kicking four. So they're all in form up there at full, in the forward line for the Demons. The uh, only time these two teams have met this season in round 12, Carlton won by 27 points with Kernahan kicking four goals. Can the Dees cause the upset, boys? Yep. I think so. Yeah, Jason? I, I, think, I think Carlton are entitled to Premiership favourites, and I think um, they had a little bit of a letdown before the finals, but that back and forth. Although I do think that uh, Carlton last week were playing a very... On Sunday afternoon, let's go to the Footscray lineup straight away and see if Dougie's in. He will be lining up for the Footscray side, I would, at the weekend. A 27-point victory over till, well, up till then, they were the Premiership favourites, Carlton. And some changes coming into the side, Gilbert, Malloy, Grinter and Yates. No one going out as yet, as, uh, as Dougie said with the Sunday game, they have the, uh, well, I suppose the Option. luxury of having the uh, large interchange bench at the moment. Last week, their forwards are on fire. Charles kicked five. Schwartz, Pike, four goals each. Glenn Lovett, three. And Gary Lyon, two. And we'll go back to Gary Lyon and ask the question with the forward line where uh, you've got so many options, Gary. It must be pretty confident up there at the moment. Yeah, it's a pretty hard place to get a kick. Well, it certainly was on Sunday, Ed. They had a, a lot of options and the boys uh, put their hand up and... Now, Schwartz was fantastic, as he has been all year, and Pike's been uh, terrific. And, of course, Shawnee Charles bobbing you up with five. So, uh, you yeah, know, it gives us a few options up there, and I guess it keeps Footscray thinking a bit. Gary, 25 points down at the 19-minute mark of the second quarter to come back and only be two points down at half-time. Uh, what was it like at that stage? It must have been a, a great feeling. One, first of all, did you, uh, did you think the game was slipping away? And then, going in at half-time, you must have been really pumped up and confident that you'd be able to go on and roll Carlton. Yeah, yeah, it was. Funnily enough, Ed, out on the ground, I, I never really um, thought that we were too far behind at all. Uh, I was surprised to hear we were 25 points down. I guess you don't pay too much attention to the scoreboard, but uh, I never thought the game was slipping away at any stage. And um, you know, to our credit, in the last 10 minutes, we, we did hit back pretty well. And 
I think it was important to stay in touch going in at half time and uh, we were pretty confident in there that uh, you know, we had enough enough goal scoring power to perhaps uh, pinch the game and, and that's how it panned out. So, Gary, Dermot yes. here. Um, hey, Dermot. How, how's your record been against uh, Footscray this year? No, not good, Dermy. We've uh, played them twice. The first one at the MCG was uh, one of those ones that could have gone either way. They burst by a handful of points, but they did give us a caning three or four weeks ago, so right. it's fresh in our memory. So and, three and, and, three and the points, second question three... I've got for Sorry, you is who was... did that stencil on the wall behind you out of Better Homes and Gardens? Directly yeah, behind yeah, you, mate. Jack, Jack had just whipped that one up. Got the, the uh, crayons out, did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did a finger painting. In fact, the, nice. uh, the margins were three points in, the, in round uh, eight and 40 points in round 23, so they gave you a bit of a caning out at the Western Oval. Uh, is that still in the back of the mind? It was only a couple of weeks ago, Gary. Yeah, certainly fresh enough, Ed. Um, a very important game, and uh, what it does do, of course, is it alerts us to the fact that they're a very, very good side, and uh, they're, they're very tough and attacking, and, um, you know, we won't go in certainly unprepared this Sunday. Oh, Alan. Oh, yes, Sam. <laughs> have you been going to the games? I have, Sam, yes. Have Enjoying you, them. Have you been delighted? Very much. <laughs> Did very you know much. that there's... Did you know that there's uh, 11 players in the side with Y in their name? Is that a fact? <laughs> That's an amazing statistic, isn't it? <laughs> Primke, Phoebe, Tingay, Lyon, Steins, Dyson, Viney, Malloy, Phoebe twice. Amazing statistic, that, Alan. Only you could come up with something like that, something menial like that, Sam. Doug, uh, Gary Lyon has kicked five goals in both games against Footscray this year, and, uh, of course, you've won both games, but uh, to knock off Gary Lyon, obviously, would give you a, a big chance. Has there been any talk of what you're going to do, how you're going to play against Gary Lyon this week? No, not really, Eddie. Um, Gary is a very good player. We're all well aware of that. And, uh, of course, you've got Swartz running around, around as well as Pike, so, you know, they've got a very good forward line, so our back line need to be very, very tight. All right. Guys. Well, which is something you're not used to, Dougie, being, being tight. tight. Mm. Sammy, good point there. Good point What's there, Sammy. About that? See, uh, <laughs> it was good. Did you see Rodney Grinder was back in the side there? I hope he gets on, does very well, but I hope he gets about nine weeks so he's more suspended than me. <laughs> <laughs> good to come out like that, Rod. Good and, luck, mate. And good luck also to Andy Lovell <laughs> and to Stephen Tingay, who are playing their 100th games as well for the Melbourne Football Club. A big game, that one, but we'll be back after the break to look at the other match. We'll go into Sunday's semi-final against Footscray, virtually injury-free. Only two demons couldn't make it out onto the track tonight, Sean Charles and Andrew Obst, but there are no doubt for the weekend. Despite the fact it's finals time, Melbourne appeared very relaxed and laid back on the training track tonight, and why not, after upsetting one of the Premiership favourites, Carlton, last Sunday. That's what the great thing about finals, particularly when you win one. I mean, the weather's good and the crowds are out of training and it's just nice to be a part of it. I mean, there's only six teams left and uh, it's a process of elimination that we want to be, uh, as I said earlier, stay alive in. Apart from Alan Jakovic, the Demons will have a full list to choose from for the match against the Bulldogs. Charles' ankle and Ob's knee didn't make an appearance, but will be fine by the weekend, while Darren Cowell's shoulder is over his problems and is pressing for selection. Melbourne will start favourites against the Dogs, although that doesn't sit too well with Lyon, considering Footscray has won both encounters this season. The one thing about it, of course, is we won't go in overconfident. I mean, uh, they did cane us three or four weeks ago, so it's something that we were to learn from, and uh, the earlier game was tight, so uh, I think it'll be a pretty even competition, and uh, yeah, we've got to prepare well. Pick on the Eagles, while Footscray's season is over after the Demons' crushing win at the MCG this afternoon. Inspired by a near record-breaking performance from skipper Gary Lyon, who finished with 10 goals, the Demons celebrated a 79-point victory. Loyalties were divided as a big crowd packed into the G. Melbourne was without the injured Sean Charles, while Ilya Grigic and Doug Hawkins were missing for the Dogs. Eagles coach Mick Malthouse was an interested spectator, with the winner to take on West Coast in Perth next Saturday. An unforgiving opening, and it took some magic from Gary Lyon to break the drought. And kicks the first goal of the game. Footscray had the reply through Kellett, but Schwartz, and more particularly Lyon, were creating all sorts of problems for the Doggies. Then the best passage of play of the first turn, ending with Dyson goaling on the run, and the Dees had a four-goal lead at the first change. When Lyon kicked his sixth, the Demons' lead had blown out to 34 points, but that Footscray spirit saw the Dogs get back into it, Stanfield snap cutting Melbourne's lead to 16 points. Soon after, though, a big blow as Chris Grant was stretched off. After colliding with Neats, at half-time, it was the Dees by 18 points. Grant returned in the third quarter, while Lyon was unstoppable. It was enough to ruin Steve Krediuk's afternoon, but there was worse to come for Footscray, as Schwartz displayed great skill, and Brett Lovett did the rest. He's better than Uriah. 
A 10-goal third quarter, and Schwartz's acrobatics continued in the final term. But with just three minutes to go, he was knocked out by Darcy and stretched from the ground. He required stitches, but should be OK for next week. As the final siren sounded, Alan Joyce congratulated Neil Baum, now for the Eagles. It's obviously not going to be easy, but it's no point coming this far and then they're not giving it a real crack. Joy for the Demons, the commiserations for the Dogs and Dougie Hawkins. Fitzroy side due to leave for Perth in less than 48 hours. Leading from the front will be Captain Gary Lyon, whose 10-goal haul against Footscray was the second highest ever recorded in a first semi-final. Lyon's effort on Sunday left him only one goal short of equaling the 63-year-old record for the first semi, set back in the 30s by Soapy Valance. And he probably could have broken it if Neil Baum not taken him off in the last quarter. But Gary will be fit, and in a busy week has juggled training with taping the last AFL squadron show for the year with Roo star Corey McCurdan. At the weekend, though, he realises there can be only one take. We're playing probably as well as we have all year. Um, we've got informed guys who are kicking goals and we've got a terrific midfield and a tight back line. So we head over to Perth with you know, our game pretty well spot on. So uh, you know, if we're good enough, we'll, we'll win it. Suitably impressed by Lyon's performance on Sunday was Eagles coach Mick Malthouse. At training last night, he was eyeballing... For in Saturday's preliminary final at the Wacker in Perth. The Demons have a distinct advantage in that area, while it seems confidence is not a problem either. It was a typical Melbourne training session this afternoon, informal and relaxed. In fact, the players went out of their way to sign autographs and please their fans in every possible way. A crowd of about 1,500 was at the Junction Oval and would have been pleased with what it saw. Sean Charles Foote made an appearance, albeit in runners. David Schwarz cut head looked fine, while the only suspect player appeared to be Andrew Obbs, who has a knee problem. But what about the Eagles? Did Melbourne's Perth spy have any idea about their injury problems? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I presume we'll have somebody there. <laughs> You're not closed tonight. Oh, no, we'll have someone there then. <laughs> Offensively, Melbourne does have an advantage with several options up forward. Baum hopes that will be a decisive factor. I think the way they play is a um, you know, reasonably strong, hard, close style of play, and they don't worry about trying to set up to kick 25 goals. I think they've still got it. Um, but maybe we've kicked more goals than they have lately, and it, perhaps, perhaps that'll uh, give us an advantage. Over the past few years, Melbourne and West Coast have built up an intense rivalry. Some on-field incidents have been a little unsavoury. Todd Viney admits the Demons always lift a little bit extra when they travel west. Oh, I don't know about hatred, but certainly, uh, you know, we always look forward to playing each other, I think, and we've built up our own rivalry and tradition uh, amongst the two teams. But, you know, we're certainly looking forward to a great com uh, great game. They, uh, they gave us a bit of a hiding early in the year, and we, we thought that perhaps they've been the best team that we've played all year. So we uh, regard them as a benchmark and look forward to, you know, mixing with them. A trip to Perth to take on the Eagles. We settled back line and they'd uh, been pretty miserly over the year, but uh, that, that'll be an important part of it. I think the West Coast play a very strong defensive game, so it'll be a matter of how well uh, we can cope with that, because they're, they're a pretty good side. Swartz has been in magnificent form. Each week he seems to get better and better. Do you think a player like him can keep going? Do you think that the finals atmosphere is something that he thrives on? Oh, there's no doubt about that. I, I think, but if, if you had watched him closely all year, he's been pretty good all year, and e even in his days when he's been you know, down a little bit, he's still contributed pretty well. He really just gives everything when he goes for the footy. It's pretty hard to hold. If you were to lose this weekend against the West Coast Eagles, would you still judge the year as being a success? It would be right to say at the start of the year, we, we within our own little group, believed that we were good enough and we were certainly aiming to be uh, able to play off and, and win a grand final. And I know that seems a pretty um, you know, cheap thing to say now, but we genuinely did feel that. Um, so we'll be disappointed if we don't get there. Melbourne, of course, copped a couple of injuries on the weekend. Swartz right at the end of the game, but he trained tonight. He did leave the track a little bit early, but he's expected to play. Sean Charles did a little bit of training in the centre, but it was only very light. But the medical staff believe that he'll be OK too on the weekend. So it's back to you in the studio, Sandy.